here's the th here's the deal. If I look at you, if you see this, see what? This means shut up. <laughs> this Why? means you're because it means you're talking too much. I'm not. I got to I've got to teach you the basics of broadcasting. All right, you're my nephew. I I have to make sure that you understand the rules. Hey there, Facebook people. We are about to get started here on episode 221. I am your host, Chris Spangle, right there. Moral, Dakota Davis, Tanner Purdue's over in the corner, and uh, Greg Lins with the yellow mic. Uh, we are going to, they're, they're the Stand cast. strong, Asians. They're the cast of <laughs> Boss Hog Liberty. And boy, do we have a treat for you tonight. So yeah, we're all out of sorts. I apologize. Everybody, in yeah, for my, I mean, for my b ridiculous behavior that I'm going to have. It's an uh, an hour where you guys were an hour late. This podcast was supposed to start at seven. I know. It's seven central. I thought. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to talk about North Korea tonight. As usual, we're going to we start we uh, chat a little bit. We uh, get to know the cast of tonight's show. We do a little uh, comedy. <clears throat> and then we uh, then we dive into the topic. So, if you're new to the program. This is uh, this is this is what we do. Uh, it is an irreverent look at modern politics. So, <clears throat> right now we're all just kind of what we're doing is sharing because sharing is caring. So before we start the program, share it on Facebook so people can join us. Uh, it is at, on the We Are Libertarians uh, Facebook page. Uh, oh, Jer, what happened to Tanner tonight? Uh, well, I, as I understand it, Tanner had his ass kicked yesterday uh, in some sort of an MMA That's training bullshit. endeavor, you and uh, and that. now you're heavily medicated, and we're doing the best we can. But you're, yeah. you're we're lucky you're here at this point. We'll get yeah. into it on the show, but you've had a hell of no. a month. But I August has not treated you well. I did not get my ass beat last night. Gotta talk a little louder, buddy. Did you walk away? We we were like squared up, and like I threw a jab, he threw like a hook, and like I we probably each landed about three punches, and I threw something and then stepped back, and we were doing it in like the wet grass, and these shoes are fucking like you were in the wet grass. You were in the wet grass. grass. Sorry, sorry for dropping that. It's okay. You can curse yeah. on this. Yeah, we haven't we haven't started yet, and you know we're not even PG thirteen once we get right. the podcast started. So. It's not like Boss Hog uh, Liberty where we try to be PG eighteen. Right, you can but, do whatever you want with this people. I don't know. Something happened. My foot slipped out on the side of my shoe, and uh, like tore up something. I thought it dislocated my kneecap, but I heard a pop. And then I mean, I I can barely I walk on. Yeah, yeah. I, I you put it on a bus like, No, not yet. You can do that. I have to. No, you do it. I normally, start the I have show. to have help to walk. If but the brace, I can walk by myself, but barely. Now, uh, Tanner, I'm gonna see me when walk. we start the show here in just a second. I'm gonna need you to talk with a little more energy, okay? <laughs> Got to talk faster. Less Jeb Bush, more Trump. Right. You're you're very low energy right now. Please clap. <laughs> how do you how do you what do you usually wear when you're sparring pants a, a pair of mma shorts and have you noticed shorts. that you're missing some pants by the way <laughs> really yeah some zip offs yeah, you really are oh the columbia ones yeah yeah i've been looking for those like, all right you guys ready I Whenever will. you are all right here we go guys was that facebook live yeah we're on facebook live if you want to go oh, share it so on Yep, yeah, go sure. share it. I'm not going to share it. I'm out of data. Here we go. Damn, my phone's dead. <laughs> All right. Yes, that is a cherry pie. We'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. <clears throat> Welcome to We Are Libertarians. I am your host, Chris Spangle. We Are Libertarians brings you all of the irreverence modern politics deserve. Think of us as the love child between National Review and Mad Magazine. We explain to you what the hell is happening in our world today and how we can fix it by thinking differently. Please be sure to rate and review us on iTunes, like us on Facebook, share this episode with friends, and support us through PayPal or Patreon at wearelibertarians.com. We are supported by listeners like you, so $1 per episode by pledging $5 a month helps us grow. We're always taking your questions and comments via email at editor at wearelibertarians.com. If you are new to the program, we catch up for the first uh, 20 or 30 minutes or so, and then we do a di deep dive into analyzing current events 
And I would finish reading my script, but Mittens just walked right in front of the intro. We're behind schedule. She had to get that in immediately. It, right, here. exactly. <laughs> this, uh, this, is, this show is for adults by semi-adults, so please be warned. The language is strong and offensive, uh, and the program is always irreverent. We try to look professional if you're watching on our YouTube channel uh, or on Facebook Live. And it looks like a professional studio until the cat, <laughs> the cat jumps on and just puts her uh, her cat butt right in the uh, the old camera's face. You, you, right, I've your, got the best view in the house. You have <laughs> right up the old shitter. <laughs> right, it is amazing how every time we start the show, you can it's, get a good look at a T bone by sticking your head up. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. That voice you hear is my dear, 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 committed. On every episode, co-host Greg Lenz. Greg, how are you? I'm doing well, Chris. How are you tonight? We seem to be missing someone. I'll tell you, you remember last fall when right. you had Cornelius. Right. And then you had Mittens. Right. Well, then you somehow re- acquired Muffins back. I cucked my uh, ex-wife's cat, which and used to be my cat. You did. And you, what you noticed, you, had, you ended up getting some cat pheromones because it just threw off the general vibe of oh, everything. It was, yeah. It and, was out of control in here. And it was, it was irritating you. I mean, I remember one episode you went and got up mid-episode and threw them all in the bedroom, locked them in there. Then felt so guilty about it, you <laughs> unlocked it and let him back out. I love my cats. I love my animals. As you know, dear leader is generous and thorough. Yes, and then you, to but all then creatures. You, you deported poor corn muffins. Cornelius went and lived with our friend Christine, and she's doing great. She's living the life. You repurposed corn, right. corn muffins. Yep, she's, she's gone. And what I've noticed... She's in a better place. ...is just like the issue with corn muffins... When we had the third cat the last few episodes, <laughs> right. it threw off the vibe. Oh. And now that that cat's gone, everything's so much better. <laughs> <laughs> we should have a strict two-cat policy on We Are Libertarians. You, you know she's listening right now just for her name. I hope so, because really, if we're being honest, two scoops, two genders, two co-hosts. God <laughs> damn <that>. right. <laughs> <laughs> that other voice you hear is that of Tanner Purdue. Tanner, you seem to be lacking in self-control. Talking before Self control. Yeah, you're talking before you're introduced. This is my dad. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, am I right? No, damn right, son. Tanner, thank you, Dad. <clears throat> you seem to be uh, slow of speech tonight. It's not like you. Is everything okay? I'm worried about you. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you're. But uh, I did mess my leg up, though. You did. Now it's you, Vicodin you, and stuff, it's, your leader. It's like I'm on a Skype call and there's a lag. <laughs> no, I, I haven't been to the doctor yet, but it's swollen like twice the size of my other knee. Your eyes are swollen too, man. Yeah, I was boxing the other night. You're boxing? Is that why your eyes are swollen? I, I mean, probably. You should I, see a doctor. Your that. your eyes are red too. I mean, I'll ask the doctor why they're red. <laughs> Did your mom poison you again? Like at my the mom's party? actually watching. Hi, mom. I love you. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to have full custody here pretty soon if the court has anything to say about it. Tanner, uh... Does your basement have enough space for him? Yeah, oh, he's been there before. That's where where his locker, quote, quote, is. Now, can you shake him? He's falling asleep. You seem Uh, very... I'm not falling... You seem very relaxed. I'm very relaxed. Yeah. How'd you get so relaxed? Dakota, we can go. He's oh, not going to do this on show. We're good. You, I, you're I, talking I, before you're introduced. Shut your I mouth. Can't, I can't just say what I did. Somebody farted on your pillow again and you got pink I'm, eye. I'm afraid I've been poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> You've been poisoned, huh? I think mom poisoned me. Rachel Valor. Your mother poisoned you. I have you. a feeling. Remember, Greg? Remember I remember that, the pool party. Dad, you remember that one? I was she desperately poisoned? worried about what was wrong with you, and it looked. I thought you had contracted pink eye from Jer's party. The reason I'm calm is I'm calm when I get furious. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a feeling mom has poisoned me again. No, uh, my friend uh, Tom Worthen, my high school uh, BFF, my high school Greg, if you will, <laughs> Said uh, to check Tanner's drink because I'm Bill Cosbying Tanner, which is not the case. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. Please There's do. the casting couch right there. <laughs> yeah. Please How do. bad yeah. do you want your own podcast, yeah, Tanner? You, you want to get into podcasting, little feller? Throw a roofie. Uh, All right. Uh, now, uh, next up is Dakota Davis, your very first appearance here on uh, We Are Libertarians. Welcome, Dakota. Is this the, the time where I say long-time listener, first-time guest? Yeah, that, that's correct. Oh, okay. Now, uh, Dakota, you are a co-host on the Boss Hog of Liberty show. That's right. Right. And uh, what is it like being in uh, Jeremiah Morrill's kingdom? It, you never know what to expect whenever you walk in through those doors. 
I'm telling you right now. I'll tell you, he treats you worse than arguably any podcast co-host in all of podcasting. I he, go over there for a simple podcast, and it turns into a... Uh, hey, help me put up this fence. While you're at it, would you do the gutters? The it was fence, his fence. The fence was mine. I know. Quiet. You've not been introduced. <laughs> I, Speak when spoken to. <laughs> no, it, you don't. Li- I, you, you, he does that to every co-host. He yells at them at the beginning of every podcast. You've not been introduced. Oh, he just the whole show. Dakota, correct me if it's I'm true. wrong. It's it's very true. He, it's he Gerald- still does it to me. Like I still need introduced. Right. It's There's just- been 16 episodes, and I still need an introduction. Apparently. Yeah. Just he's just been. Sc- he just screams at his co-host. Power corrupts the entire time. That we are, of course, speaking of Jeremiah Morell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah, how are you? Hello, dear leader. Thank you for welcoming us on the show. Uh, I'm so glad to have you. Now, you guys have your own podcast, and it is the, uh, the Boss Hog of Liberty. I'm very proud to have, uh, to have brought all of my friends to uh, today's show. Yeah, you... Uh, <laughs> I just, just I'm like, the only one that rode with him. <laughs> <laughs> Tanner, you drove yourself, huh? Of course. <laughs> he's fiercely he's independent. <laughs> he says, of course. Now, uh, Tanner, how was the drive over? I thought it was awesome, really. <laughs> it's a beautiful drive, isn't it? Beautiful. Right down 70 from the east side of Indianapolis. Yeah. How many, uh, do you remember how many police officers we saw on the way here? I didn't see one. Yeah. That's right. That's how many did you two see? We saw two. Two? Plenty. Plenty. Were they hiding in that little <laughs> trap right before you get to 465? Or what? No, there's the, one as soon there. as we got on to 70. Yep. It was like, there's a one. Always. Oh, yeah. That, it was a state. state <laughs> yeah, stadium. Yeah, I remember yeah. seeing him. Yeah. That's the only one I saw. Now, uh, now, Jeremiah, you have a podcast called The Boss Hog of Liberty that everybody should subscribe to. You, you've built quite the following. You've got a very good following. It's a very funny show. I've listened to approximately two and a half episodes, and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very, up two whole episodes. <laughs> it's like my uncle's here. He's just. <laughs> it's like, oh, dude. oh, it's drunk uncle over you, there in the corner. <laughs> just you listen to two episodes. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. So we're uh, we're sixteen episodes in. Uh, it's been a. Uh, it, it's a little bit of a pop culture show. It's a little bit about my life, Dakota's life, and whatever guests we have on. Yeah. It's uh, it's focused on small time Indiana, a lot of local politics, and we try to cast them out for national issues. Or if there's a story that catches our eye that's national, we'll talk about that. A lot of uh, you know, it's like a, a real life Pawnee. You are actually the real life Ron Swanson. I, right now, I'm the Ron Swanson of Henry County. I guess I'm the president of the local parks board. Uh, I'm not the day to day person, but uh, yeah, I I I have the uh, I'm the president of a park. Yeah. Now we seem to, we seem to be down someone already, Greg. <laughs> It's nap time. He said he'd be right back. <laughs> With, given the uh, handicapable state he's in, I don't know that, how quickly that that uh, that means. Perhaps so, somebody's at the door. Considering now, he got lost entering the apartment <laughs> complex, and we were shouting Marco Polo and told him to honk his horn. Now, honk your horn, the, we can't hear was him. Was that the door shutting? He yes, left. Sir? He, he left. left. If you'd listened to three episodes, he'd have stayed. I, I, I won't say who, but I was given two gummy bits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's coming back. Okay. No, he's not. I just. I, yeah. no, it was. It could have been Jeremiah. It could have been you. It could have been <laughs> yes. muffins. It could have been Dakota. The likely suspects. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, That's who the investigation would start the one, with. The, the ones here us. wearing collared shirts yeah. brought me two gummy bears that. Oh, smell uh, nothing like sugar. I'll be I'll be keeping those uh, to keep young Tanner safe uh, from from drugs. Oh. Hugs, theoretical drugs. Right. gummy board, gummy bears. Right, theoretical. This is show business. <laughs> yes, you have a lovely pie on the table. I do. It was provided by the very lovely fiance of Dakota, Miss Audrey Joe. Yes, soon to be daughter in law. Soon to be daughter in law, and it was. I was stunned because when you asked what kind of pie I like this morning in chat. I honestly thought it was a setup for a punchline. Like I was going to be whatever I said was going to be the victim of some punchline. So I read it like I'm not, I'm not, not taking the bait. Yeah. Turns out it was a real <laughs> thing. A real and pie. She baked me a cherry pie, which is just awesome because it's my favorite. And I'm a little shocked though. If I listened to episode 16. Yeah. Given her tone and her feelings about <laughs> you me, did listen to episode sixteen. I'd have bet money that there wasn't a pie coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I listened very well. I told you there would be homework. You really need to. Wa- you needed to listen to that. I listened very, very, very intently. Yeah. Now 
You were uninvited in no unclear terms. Oh, it to was the made wedding. crystal clear that I am not to be a part of any wedding ceremony, even as the father of the groom. Am I invited? None of us other than Jer, I believe. Because it's, fa- it's family and friends only. As or I like, noted, you know, family only, only. I get to go, but I have to stand. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Jer's mind's not allowed to sit. It's more of a, it's, it's more <laughs> French, it's forced um, groomsmanship. Everyone be quiet. Dakota, I'm not invited to your wedding. I've been, you're invited to the reception. No, 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 no. I don't care about receptions. <laughs> I don't drink. I don't dance. I love Jesus. Dancing, uh, I can... Oh, oh boy. Did you oh, just spill no. a bit? I oh, did. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> the sober one here. <laughs> Take your crackberry off of it. It's getting, it's getting yeah. beer. Make sure you... <laughs> That's irreplaceable. <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> We've got a real situation here. Dakota... It is dripping on me. <laughs> I, I, I started this podcast network. I made you, and I'm not allowed to come yeah. to your wedding. I didn't invite anybody to the wedding. This is outrageous. I, there was a hundred people that were invited. See, they always like I've I I've been uh, you've been through a wedding. I've been through a wedding. You were at my wedding. I was. You timed it. I did. I think it was uh, it, less than fifteen. minutes. It was fourteen minutes and forty five seconds. Yeah, it was almost as short as the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> we had yats at the reception. Yeah, oh, I love yats. yats. We we managed to get that wedding in under five thousand uh, dollars. It cost uh, less than the divorce. <laughs> <laughs> That's our exact budget too. Yeah. It's it's hard to do a wedding under five thousand bucks. It, it really is. Like people don't. My dad does not realize that. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you talk right into that mic, Dakota. Your your mic nope. technique. As much as we've tried with young Dakota, Jer, he's not getting it. We're getting there. He's been going through his diaphragm skills and he's been practicing. I even at the last at the end of episode sixteen, I had to tell him to get Tanner. right up on that thing. I tried to break into your neighbors. Tanner, <laughs> why did you spill this beer? Yeah. Yes, you did. You There's beer on the, the table, and then you left I in had, shame. Had, no, you spilled your beer, Tanner. You spilled the beer, and Sit. then you walked no, away. No, 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 no. Sit down. We're very angry with you. you. This this is an intervention. You spilled a beer. I, Sit down. I no, sit down. Sit, talk into the microphone. Sit down in front of the microphone. What is going on? T- you spilled the beer, and you ruined the table, and you ruined a microphone. What? Yes. Don't you remember when you did that? I miss Scat Cat as well. I'm answering comments on the on the chat. Everybody, let's focus on Tanner spilling the beer, please. S- sit down. Tanner. Greg, can you move back a little bit so people can see his face? I did not know that happened. Yeah, you did. You spilled the beer. Sit down, man. Yeah, we need spilled, to talk. You spilled one of Greg's beers, too. Like, it wasn't even... Yeah. It wasn't even one of the cheap ones that we're drinking. Tanner, <laughs> what do you have to say for spilling that beer? Did I do it? Yes, you did it. Like, you guys aren't just playing. No, we're not playing no, we're with not you. Playing. I'm very angry right now, like, actually. Seriously? I'm very, yeah. Look I'm, at look at your father continuing to clean up your mess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just in shock. You're in shock, yeah. No pie for you. I'll give you the money for it tomorrow. All right, you owe me three dollars for that beer, Tanner, that you spilled. <laughs> did you ever? Did you ever replace no, the I'm, broken Guinness bottle from Jeremiah's? Oh, no, I didn't, did I? <laughs> Empty right. promises. Tabs up to $10 now. <laughs> no, but uh, what about the microphone? Yeah, well, you will have to talk, because that's a $100 microphone you ruined. And your father's Blackberry got wet. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> I did not. You did? <laughs> did I knock this over? Yeah, well, you knocked a beer over. What beer? The beer that just spilled. The one in the can? Or yes. That the can beer. How could you? This one. I don't know how. It was all the way over there. Uh, we're just all very mad at you right now. Wow. It was whenever you moved the Well, we're going to have to start the show over. This was awful. This is... You ruined the show. Yeah, someone better call that kid an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> young, young Tanner will be sleeping here because he seems to... Uh, he, look at his mouth is just wide open. He's... No, I'm just like... So upset. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get through this. It's going to be okay. No, like, I don't remember doing that. Well, then you need to see a doctor. No, like, what happened exactly? Like, did I stand up and just fucking knock it I over? think when you got up to leave, yeah, you yeah, don't know why you left. Whenever you but... moved the mic. Whenever I you tilted said, the I'll mic out right of there. And I turned around. Yeah, well. You just clipped it, barely. Oh, my God. 
She like <laughs> <laughs> I knocked it over God talking damn. about Audrey. <laughs> I, I, I knew you guys were fucking. Oh, uh, we're so sorry, son. <laughs> son of a bitch. You're an easy scapegoat. <laughs> you know I'm leaving. I can't believe that worked. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving. It barely did work. It didn't barely because, work. Like, it totally I, at worked. first, I was like, "You guys are fucking with me," and Dakota was like, "No, I'm fucking pissed. You're supposed to be my brother, dude." <laughs> now, how what did the, the fuck, how did this Dakota? start? Where there now, Dakota looks except like uh, you I'm started upset. it. Well, I took a photo of Dakota, and he looked like a young Greg Lenz. So I said, "He must be your son." And you go, "Well, I I didn't have sex at eleven, so he can't be my son." But none it of was us twelve. Twelve, whatever. I just. But turned. Rachel Valor said, "Oh yes, you did." <laughs> and then she, yeah, she yeah. she outed me. I thought it was Lisa Joe Crosby. It's all the same. Honestly, I was twelve. <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> Let's be honest. Hey, Rachel Ray, is new Rachel's Lisa. Rachel's my mom. Now Re- replacement Lisa. Hi, Lisa, listening Ray, down in Miami. Rachel is my mom. Now and then, how did Tanner get adopted? Then some. She no. Rachel Valor. Like, she listen to it, and then she goes, your son Tanner, because she didn't realize it was Dakota who you were referring to. Right. And so then I was just like, well, I'll just, whatever. Yeah. I'll just claim him. <laughs> you know, he, he needs tutelage. He needs, you know, I'm bringing him along. Figure. I right. got him that haircut, cleaned up his act. I'm, I'm the man. Started, you know, getting him, getting him in extracurricular activities. Yes, such as uh, Cricket Wireless Empire. Yeah. yeah. Poor Tanner. Tanner's uh, looking for employment. I, I'm still upset, like... I, I knew it was bullshit, but, like, when you guys actually said it, it was for real. Like, we I gas- still felt you. like it was bullshit. But Are you still talking about spilling the beer? We were asking yeah. we were asking that you're looking for employment, so if anybody I'm out not there... really looking for employment. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, Give I'll, him 20 I'll take days a notice. job. <laughs> I'll take a job. He's got but... a gummy bear empire. <laughs> My girlfriend, Sarah Potter, just tried to call me in the middle of the show. Of course. No. She knows we're live. She's watching, and she just tried to call. All right. Well, li- make sure you listen to the Boss Hog of Liberty. That's probably important. She texted back and said I was rude. That's, it could be ugly. I don't know. I could be in trouble. Yep. You, you can. Oh, he you, got a phone charger. Yeah. I, I, I don't have a box for you. I don't know what to do. As accommodating as his box is, it won't handle a plug like yours. I feel like like this is something you should have been prepared for. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, do that. All right, so Boss Hog of Liberty on iTunes. You go. I think it's just BossHog.com, maybe? Boss Hog of Liberty. Uh, it's Fireside. Just, uh, it, Facebook, look Boss Hog of Liberty. Uh, and I'll tell and, you what you yeah. do. You or go, just go to the link on, on We Are Libertarians. Libertarians. Go to we, podcasts. Yeah, go to We Are Libertarians on the right-hand side. You can find the Boss Hog of Liberty there. Tanner is on very often. Uh, I wish you guys could see Tanner. It's causing quite the uh, – yeah. It's causing quite the uh, – the scuttle, or I guess scuttlebutt within the community. You're starting to rustle some jimmies in the local government structure. Absolutely, yeah. We've had we've had a number of different uh, local decision makers on and influencers on the show. Interesting. Uh, so yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. Now, are yeah. they open to all of your topics? Some have yeah. been. Some 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 enjoy it, but tell me they disagree or they tell us they disagree with us anyway. But that's cool. So cool. you're changing it from the inside Where with your the, podcast. Well, our our that's podcast right, yeah. is influencing the Henry County Courthouse. <laughs> At least I'm, half I'm, of it listens. I'm trying desperately to get. Uh, chickens to be legal in Newcastle. You can't have chickens in your backyard. No, no. You have to have at least five acres. And Is be that why Tanner was trying limits. to punch honeybees because he couldn't catch the chickens? <laughs> he was <laughs> anger. Yeah, <laughs> furious. <laughs> It's all <laughs> MMA training. Now, when he talks off mic, ignore that he's talking. Uh, <clears throat> so, <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I can't focus. It's just a, it's a, this is a lot. Tanner, go into the kitchen. <laughs> Right now, for those of you that are off off Tan- camera here, go Tanner to, is performing go a to the kitchen. scavenger hunt. He went outside to get a uh, get a phone charger. And behind the blender, there's a thing that you can plug in he's there. He's currently getting directions from Spengler as yeah. to where to plug it in. Yeah. But he's wandered. He's hobbling because he's he did go through a traumatic knee injury his, yesterday. His knee injury. His ACL's bad. So he's gone. He's got a knee brace on, I'll be honest. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he's legitimately hurt. Oh. Uh, uh, we were late coming over here, dear leader. I do apologize. But you Tanner, should. Tanner uh, had forgotten to put gas in his car because it's needed you have to burn gas to get here uh and right. then he didn't have his debit card because apparently somebody swiped it from him or well, when you're along an the way. og libertarian you only use bitcoin that's true or you barter so you avoid taxation so on right. that bum no leg bum currency. wheel of his he had to go into the flying j stand in line come back it's been a whole thing it's it's, it's uh, I, I like that dakota dakota goes did you cancel your card <laughs> and go, why are you pretending like he's an adult <laughs> 
The kitchen is through there, buddy. <clears throat> on the other you side of the curtain. If you were just in it. He said, <laughs> whenever I asked him if he lost the card, he just said, well, it's protected by a PIN number. <laughs> I know he ruined secured sh- by Visa. He ruined show business. He broke the light. Now he, uh, he blew the mystery that there's a kitchen behind there. <laughs> uh, if you're watching on Facebook, he's a little anarchist Tasmanian devil. <laughs> he is. Glaucoma this- free and tearing up everything. I want to take a, a minute before we move on to start talking about North Korea to thank a few people. We talked about uh, a few of the software. I'm I'm redesigning the site. I'm uh, building out a few different things that you will hear me talk about with. Uh, with uh, Lynn on the Chris Spangle Show. That's another podcast of ours. And uh, I, I'm going to talk about more about the... <laughs> <laughs> There's rustling in your kitchen, dear Dakota, leader. Dakota, <laughs> please, go help your brother. <laughs> Nothing's, <laughs> Nothing's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's behind the, the... You told him to use the blender, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Please don't turn the blender on. <laughs> Uh, we are, uh, I'm going to rebuild the site. We're, we're planning out a few different things, and I'm going to start uh, doing that podcast about podcasts that you've told me to do and uh, doing a few other things, and uh, we're, we're trying to raise around 500 bucks, and I'm about uh, 300 of the way there, uh, so I need around $250 more. I want to thank uh, Rick Irvine. I want to thank... Um, I'm going through the list. Austin Broderson. I want to thank Christy Avery and Craig DaCosta. Uh, Ryan Ripley's helping us out. He has a great podcast, The Agile Answer Man. Tanner says he's good for 50 bucks, too. Tanner's going to donate yep. 50 bucks. And then, <laughs> are you okay? He looks like he's in pain. And uh, thank you guys so much for, for helping us out. So, uh, you guys are the best. And uh, we we're are. Charging. We, we're char- you're charging me? No, Your phone, phone is charging. charging. I was like, I think it sounds like you owe me something. Uh, so we're almost there. We're Greg rebuilding. It. We're we're building out a few new plans to try and uh, and the membership uh, site will be up very soon too. So that is that is what we're working on. Also wanted to take a moment to uh, plug my buddy uh, Johnny Johnny Rocket. Uh, his the Johnny Rocket Launchpad has a comic book which you took and took a look at. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. It's, I'm still not sure if it's a graphic. Novel, or graphic comic novel, book, comic. Like the production value is insane. Yeah, and, and the only reason I say that is because I know to certain libertarians that will be, you know, yes. calling it the wrong one will be an act of ex- excommunication. Yeah, it's very cool. At johnnyrocketlaunchpad.com, it's called Liberty Force, and it's on Comicsology now. So, so check that out. Well done by Johnny. Um, Forward by Tom Woods. He's no, he's not messing around. No, this is a great book. It's a, it's a really good book. So it's really well done. Let's talk about North Korea, the fat little midget in uh, the fat <laughs> North Korean midget in. Uh, uh, is midget appropriate for Kim Jong? Is Jung? it dwarf midget or Un? He's a little dictator. Vertically challenged. I don't think he would be considered even a midget. N- okay. All right. Fair enough. Midget, midget expert Tanner Purdue. But we'll still call him a fucking midget. All right. <laughs> and so, uh, Kim Jong Un has made certain threats. Can you can you fill us in? Let's start off with what exactly happened with North Korea, Greg. So North Korea, the UN Security Council, all members, all the voting members, all I think it's all, what is it, all seven? Seven voting members of the Security Council all voted to impose sanctions, the most harsh sanctions in the history of the UN against North Korea, essentially overnight crippling 30% of their economy. Including Russia. Russia and China both and supported China. the resolution. China even helped bring it to the vote. They facilitate it. So it's pretty like it's a pretty stunning rebuke. And it, the reason why they did so is China hasn't exactly have been very helpful in handling this uh, this problem. And so this is re- extremely harsh economic sanction by the U.N. Council. And it really does threaten the economy to the point of instability of the North Korean regime, because it'd be like the United States economy suffering just overnight 30 percent. Um, cut on exports and unable to export iron, iron ore, seafood, um, and some other raw materials that are the primary um, exports for their economy. But since they don't import, any partners do they have? China, yeah, Iran, I believe. Um, I assume Venezuela. It's against North Korea. Yeah, and so if, this cripples if, if the they, regime. If they lose China, that's like their major trading partner. They're going to be screwed. And it's really almost not even trading in so much as it is um, aid, because their economy is almost entirely dependent upon aid because they spend all their money developing weapons. Right. Their China actual hard currency. Their aid too, so. I mean, yeah, China's their sure. lifeline to feed their citizens, even though yeah. they're under, you know, it's 
it's right at the precipice of mass starvation at all the time in right. North Korea. So, so this starts with new sanctions at the United Nations. And huge. The one of a kind. First of, it, uh, if you're a college football fan, it's like when they gave the death penalty to SMU and 20 year ban, no scholarships. Like when, it is brutal. So when did the UN? When did the Security Council pass last these? week? Last and week. then that's what triggered. They had tested in July. It was in response to their two tests of their inter um, ballistic missile program, and so their most recent one, it appears, looks like it could. Uh, it definitely can hit Guam. Hence him saying that, you know, that's something that they're looking into. Right. And so what we don't know, though, is it's very, very debatable as to whether or not that they could actually miniaturize the nuclear warhead to the point it could hit. I read that, too. What actual exports does North Korea have? Iron, iron ore, seafood. trying to think what else. Could you imagine Uh, North Korean seafood? Is that what what they get at Long John Silver's? It's, that the, same, <laughs> it's the same sea you get for Chinese food. Okay. It's the same sea. All I mean, right. They have lead and coal. Lead yeah, and coal. lead, coal. I mean, it's all raw materials. They're very much like right. a... Unrefined. They're just... They're just it's the resource milling. curse, basically. Like, they have no developed economy, one, because of communism, but two, because they're entirely dependent upon what uh, raw materials they do have. But mm. they will be a superpower by 2020. <laughs> I was shocked to find out seafood would be one. I would never go order North Korean shrimp. That's what North I'm saying. Yeah. Like, no, I want the North. I want the South Korean sushi. Right, don't yeah, don't yeah, give exactly. me any of the eel. Now it, it yeah. is it is unique because the Security Council spoke as one voice, including China. Yeah, and so chi- China's actually been a little bit. Russia was the real wonder whether or not they'd hold out, and because we, you know, President Trump signed sanctions against them, right. And then requested 755 U.S. diplomats be removed from Russia mm-hmm. in response to the sanctions. So that was a bit iffy and probably took quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of hand-holding by Secretary Tillerson behind the scenes. You know, because it looked like a weak move by Putin to go ahead and vote with, um, with the U.S. interests on, this, on these sanctions. Alex on Facebook, on the Facebook Live, says that there are no industries to pollute the water, so their seafood is considered high quality. Oh, that actually makes yeah, pretty yeah, good makes sense. Makes pretty, does, pretty yeah. good sense. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Alex. I think I read that at the same time you were saying it. Yeah. Uh, now, North Korea is facing the worst drought in 16 years, which has to put a ton of pressure on them. Their actions are a result of the instability that's, go- that's societal pressures. So what North Korea is doing is they're, they're basically, they, they, they do this every so often, trying to get money. They do. They're, they're, they're saber-rattling, and they're... they're it's a desperate they're, act. They're trying to scare everybody into paying them off. But at some point, they're just going to go over the edge. Exactly. And at right. some point, you that's the thing, though, is no nuke is really ever – no one's ever – I mean, the United States is the only country that's ever used a nuke on offense. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was to stop World War II, to put an end to it. So That's what we tell ourselves. Yeah. It was really because we're Sorry, racist Michael against Schultes. the Japanese <laughs> and our hatred of Toyota and Hondas. <laughs> is Michael Schulteis, our North oh, Korean friend. <laughs> <laughs> we need to watch him. I still have never received an apology for World War II from Michael Schultes. <laughs> Until he apologizes for Pearl Harbor, Michael. I'm sorry. But he is from Tennessee as well, so he's from the South. You should like him for that. Yeah, but Bittner's from the South, too. Yeah. Oh, boy, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Can't well, do that. I'm conflicted. Oh, Bittner. Uh, you, listen, i got to warn you. I know. I'm Bit- not pleased. Bittner's coming next week. You bittnered me. He will be here. You treated me like Jeremiah Morrill's Chevy truck. <laughs> you're gonna right. let you're gonna let him wreck our podcast right. like he wrecked your Ran Chevy right over him. It's Whoa. a GMC Sierra. It's in lovely condition. Listed on Craigslist, sixty two hundred dollars. <laughs> yes, Tanner. What was that that happened to your truck? Like, what did he do to it? All I saw was the picture. It got bitnered, man. What did he do? All I saw he hit was some it. little girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you ran over. Really she forgot. She forgot fine. that there was a fire hydrant in front of his house, and when he cut it to the, he backed up into it. It was a dog dressed like a fire hydrant. <laughs> it's been a pug. He just it, was a, it was a pug. <laughs> he would never have damaged. Yeah, it. Dakota Davis. Four eight six seven Northview Lane, New- Newcastle, Indiana. Send your letters there, not to me. Uh, animal violence is never funny. Uh, now, sometimes <laughs> says the kid whose class in high school killed several turtles, hit a goose with a golf club, and then poisoned punkies with Tyler. Yeah, that, with Tyler I, that was not I, my had class. Nothing to do I with think, it. I think it's kind of fucked up to have kids dissect frogs and cats and shit. I do. I don't think that schools should be dissecting cats either. That's fucked up. I'm with you. I do dissected you, a cat in high school. Do you eat Chinese food? I wouldn't do it. I told her to fuck off. Now, I President Trump know. responded uh, in probably, like, in the most Greg Lynn's way <laughs> on Twitter. Well, that, they said it was North improvised. Yeah. So he had prepared remarks. I think he watched the 
first or second episode of The West Wing, yes. where President Bartlett said he's going to rain down fire. Yes, I, uh, with I, the wrath of God's yes. own thunder. Yes, I believe he tried to go Sorkin on him. He did, and he did it off script. And boy, did that... Because at the same time, Secretary Tillerson is trying to get Russia to be... Because any no vote on the Security Council stops sanctions. Right. So he needs all, you need all seven. And so the, and the whole time Trump does this, he's mid-negotiation on on the vote. Yeah, and well uh, no, I guess no, he wasn't because the vote had already been hand- handled and then Trump responded to Kim responding with his to the sanctions. Threat. He he wrote this, they will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. As far as yeah, threats go by a president, that's well, good. That that sounds what's like crazy about him saying that is normally when he says something he has his like like when he says something normally he talks like with his hands like that. Right. And he had his arms folded like the Grinch whenever he was saying it. <laughs> he, that was actually what he really talked about was, was the first huge uh, aberration in Trump's body I language noticed, during an uh, announcement was that he said it with hands folded and looking to the side he looked they, like were tu- they were tucked like when Kat gets nervous and smells her armpits <laughs> and then she <laughs> sniffs them like this it's exactly his body but, uh, his posture during that oh so this was I thought this was a tweet no, no he no. said this in an, uh, as a response because I mean Kim says that he can hit Guam like, you know, they do the tests. Guam schwam. And it's oh, like, honestly, yeah. there's a major military base. Yeah. And then Dan Coates oh. has been talking, went around and said that this was North Korea poses an existent, existential threat to the United States, which is just right. ridiculous. Right. They don't. Like, it, 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 yeah. Theoretically, yes. But the, the, we even have a nuclear defense, you know, missile defense system. And right. it's been tested successfully once in non wartime, you know, in a non wartime test. But they don't have this sophisticated technology. This is primarily been fed to them by Pakistanis and it's the our, Chinese. Our years partners ago. are the ones that we're worried about. We're worried about South Korea and yeah. Seoul. That's and we're the real about worry. Japan and yeah. defending right. them. And and Japan's less of a worry except that we are very much in a treaty that's about as binding as any treaty that exists in defense of Japan for a, a regional threat. <laughs> really and the threat was considered China with Taiwan. <laughs> Check on your brother. <laughs> You're, he's okay. He's gonna make it. Yeah, we and and the the same with South Korea. I mean, we have vested interest in in making. I mean, we have a treaty with them to make sure that they aren't uh, over overrun. I mean, or... We're the reason they're sort of in the predicament they're in because back when the parallel was drawn and the two the two separate countries were. You okay? He, he'll be all right. The two separate countries were set up, um, and then there was the the. the essentially no man's land in the middle that serves as the protected border with landmines in between. Um, we pushed the envelope on that because actually the North Korean Peninsula wanted, or the Korean Peninsula wanted unification not to be split into two. Well, so South Korea economically is very important to the Americans now. Yes. I mean, we, so Samsung, Electronics. Samsung, LG, Kia, some major corporations, there, there's all kinds of manufacturing of name brands that you don't know of, but are th- things that are actually made there. Our economy would suffer greatly if something happened. Huge. So. They kind of are the R and D department and manufacturing. Since once you lose your manufacturing base, you don't have you don't have the people in there tinkering because you just do marketing and uh, supply chain, and right. so you lose that sort of knowledge and uh, company knowledge goes to wherever the parts are being made. Absolutely. Now, is it true that Guam will uh, grow too populated and capsize? As uh, Congressman Hank Johnson once said. Thank you to Ed Bell for uh, reminding me of that funny. He said what? He, Hank Johnson said, is it possible that Guam be- could become overpopulated and capsized into the sea? <laughs> that was a congressman? Yes. Many Scott years ago. Scott Philpott, I think you're exactly right. He is higher than Willie Nelson. <laughs> yeah. There's a good chance of so, it. So, Spangle, do you still have those gummy bears? I ate them. Oh, uh, you miss it. It was whenever you went to go get your phone charger. Yeah. Oh, I miss the gummy bears. Yeah, I yeah. ate them, man. They were good. Uh, now, aren't you amazed how functional he is? Yeah. yeah just mean, give him thirty I mean, minutes. No, <laughs> that's I mean, when the pizza. They, they were just regular gummy bears. Realistically, we we shouldn't be that concerned about North Korea, right? <sighs> It's when it's nuclear. It's always just ner- it makes you nervous. And like right. if you right. look at the American media, they're playing it up like we're on the brink of war yeah. with the Hermit Kingdom. Right. And and this echoes back as as you put in your great show notes, which we will put into. Uh, the, I already this, uploaded them to uh, the group. All right, to this post uh, on WeAreLibertarians dot com uh, for this episode. This is like the '60s with the Chinese in the '60s when they became a nuclear power. And the amount of terror that the American people and the American presidents and Kennedy and Johnson both had in uh, –
then Ch China get, getting nuclear weapons. I mean, this is Mao's China, too, so it's not like the capitalist you know, right, state Right, it's not the China we know today. Right, which yeah. is arguably yeah. economically more free than we are. Yeah, in, in some the, ways, yeah. yeah. Because at the end of the day, if there's a bunch of environmentalists, they just run them over with a tank. Like their students in Tiananmen Square. <laughs> that, that's your fascist capital. Yeah, like, oh, look, a new road paved with people. <laughs> but, so, you know, like, that, they don't have any worry or concerns about economic, environmental regulations, and that's why their air quality is the way it ignoring is. Ignoring the right. fact that it's North Korea is a totalitarian dictator, if you're running Gregdom, okay, you've got your own kingdom. Dear leaderdom. Exactly. Right. And, and Pakistan and India and South Africa have nuclear weapons. Why the hell wouldn't you want to have nuclear weapons? Correct. Which is what this is about. Yeah, you, and has always been about. Uh, right. It, it's it a is, single deterrent. It is not about North Korea having the ability to t attack anyone. It's don't attack us. Which, why would anybody want... It's like, why would I... You, you fixed up your truck. It looks beautiful now, which is $6,400 on Craigslist. But why would you want your Bitnerd truck? You know what I mean? Like, who wants? Who, who doesn't wants, want a truck with a story? Huh? Who wants to attack North Korea? Like, it just it doesn't make sense to me. And I mean, for the right price. Right. <laughs> so I'd never pay. We are libertarian special. If today. I find out an automobile has even a Bitner within five feet of it, fifty percent you know, fifty percent depreciation. My Bitner has never been within five feet of my vehicle. That's why it's retained its value. That's now, exactly in, also available on Craigslist. I bet we could yes. buy North Korea for 10 bitcoins. Seriously. Somebody call <laughs> Jesse Riddle right now. <laughs> well, that's actually, like, the impact that they're worried about is the cultural, like, it's the pop culture, there's invasion. Like, eventually information feeds its way into North well, Korea, and they're like, wow, this isn't the way the rest of the world is. And so it's, so then when you factor in starvation and people being desperate, cultural revolutions right around the corner. If you go back yeah. and listen to an episode we did a few episodes ago about North Korea, you'll hear more of an insight as to what the regime is like, and, and we also recommended several documentaries in that episode. Uh, but let's circle back to the China thing, yeah. because I think that that really is instructive. In December of 1960, the U.S. National Intelligence Estimate warned that China's arrogant self-confidence, revolutionary fervor, and distorted view of the world may lead Beijing to miscalculated risks. This danger would be heightened if communist China achieved a nuclear weapons capability. Revolutionary fervor aside, the same assessment could be written about North Korea today. The same rogue state description fits the profile of China in the 1960s. Throughout the decade, Chinese leaders routinely dismissed the dangers of nuclear war and would stress the inevitable victory of the people's war against the U.S. imperialism and Soviet revisionism. At the same time, Chinese leaders greatly exaggerated the capabilities of their own nuclear program and downplayed the risks posed by potential counter-force strikes against Chinese mainland. And they had their first Chinese nuclear test in 1964. But when they did that, Beijing stressed the following – that they, their goal for developing nuclear weapons was to break the superpower monopoly between the USSR and America. Which, to his credit, Kim Jong-un has said the exact same thing publicly. He has also uh, said what China said, which was a no-use first, no first use policy, mm -hmm. which is we will not use them first. Uh, we will only use them if attacked. And then uh, China supports the complete elimination of nuclear weapons. Yeah. I and, mean, and so China, that is the one thing that they differ on with North Korea. And this is Maoist China, too, which was much scarier. You know, Nixon would have probably been tried for violating the Jones Act for opening up a dialogue with the Chinese covertly. Right. Because he saw that it would be an Asian pivot for U.S. policy long term. Nixon was your favorite president? In ways. <laughs> <laughs> Roger Stone has my favorite tattoo of Nixon. Yeah. <laughs> Do, you, uh, Do you ever watch Futurama? Never. Oh, okay. Never is mind. it good? Yeah, it's, it's a pretty good show. They, it's based in the year 3000, roughly. And uh, they have one of the characters who is the president of the United States is Nixon's head in a jar of formaldehyde. <laughs> <laughs> he would support that, I'm sure. Poor I'm alive. Sure. Now, uh, despite the, the caution, they, uh, John Kennedy, I think, let's talk about some, because I think that as we move into the discussion over North Korea at various points, you know, the, like the Bush administration, I remember post 9-11 was, you know, they, they posed the greatest threat. And uh, the axis of evil, right? And yeah, and and here we are, ten, fifteen years later, and they're they're just the same little broken country that they are. And and I think it's it was really instructive as I read through your notes about Kennedy and Johnson and the I just the wish Chinese. John McCain were still alive to see this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and uh, 
I won't say his nickname, but it's on 4chan. The alarmism that is going on over Kennedy. North Korea is the same that went on with Kennedy. China. Uh, it is. It's the same. It's funny how history repeats itself. But Now, China is a, a much... You know what's funny is, realistically, China was a much graver danger because of the pure size. Right. And then, you know, we had we were trying to defeat an ideology in communism. Right. And here is the... Com- like, the Soviet Union's in decline or what we perceive as decline, and here's this young, vibrant nation that's growing on the verge of having a coming out party in the world stage, and it's very, very communist. Not fake communist like Soviet communism, you know, where right. it's, they just like the totalitarian part. Like, this is a very, very, these are true believers, like Che Guevara type believers that sure. are poised for growth. And so them becoming nuclear is a much graver danger, and yet, I mean, I understand why Kennedy felt the way he did, because he had already seen... You know, he's also young and was going to be tested. Uh, he said, like the potential Chinese nuclear test, quote unquote, likely to be the most significant and worst event of the 60s. He would disagree in Dallas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> savage. Might, might be the worst. <laughs> Shit's <of> fucked, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think there are a couple Kennedy incidences in the 60s that were uh, more catastrophic. In hindsight, and... he said, go ahead and nuke Johnson. <laughs> right. Uh, so, so, yeah, I think the alarm is in North Korea. But, yeah. but when you look at North Korea, there really is no, I mean, it, it, it isn't a, yes, the guy kills his, pe- his own people. Yes, he is a dick. Dictator, but there doesn't seem to be mass starvation in the way that there is in in other places. There doesn't seem to be a humanitarian crisis. No, so, there is there is very much support for Kim Jong Un, right? You know, y- 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 it's a very brainwashed society, and I mean, they the view re- this very much having nuclear capability as a sign of prestige, and that right. enhances his control over things. You know, it gives them a they're a they're a more collectivist culture by just purely historically and as a culture, period. Right. And so factor in that they now are all of a sudden a, viewed as a, a deterrent threat and a real worry for the world's great evil and last superpower, the United States. That is a feather in the cap for the people that keeps them... Um, Keeps their allegiance to the to the idea of the country. Well, and that's part of the reason that they do the saber rattling. Exactly, is that, is that he's trying to nothing gets a. Every president wants to be the wartime president because then the, they're popular. Do you know what's coming up in six months? What in February? Mm-mm. February. In February. Valentine's Day. The Winter Woo. Olympics. The Winter Olympics. Where's okay. it at? South Korea. Seoul. They're really? Going to be South Korea. I did not know that. In six that months, either. we have the the, the Winter Olympics are going hmm. to be. Talk about an right, added wrinkle. Right yeah. where they're under threat of nuclear war. Brand new wrinkle. That is going to be so fascinating to watch. China will step in. So will Russia. Because yeah. even, even Putin, when they had the Sochi Winter Olympics, even he looked like the greatest guy in the world. He just did a yeah. phenomenal job presenting Russia. Oh, I'm so wonderful. I love right. the gays. Took a picture with every gay person in Sochi <laughs> that week. You know, what are you talking about? I love the women. I have all the women. Come here, Scott Hamilton. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Want to go bear, bear shirt or bear chested riding on a bear with me? Would, would you take a trip to North Korea? No, would you? No, I think I would. After it's, Otto it's Wampler, like asking if Dakota, I Dakota to and take I watched a nude swim with Jesse Riddle. No way. <laughs> Dakota and I watched the uh, the interview two or three times to do sh- show prep, so we're, we're yeah. pretty sure it's going to be awesome. Which I've never watched playing him. basketball with Kim, <laughs> Did my he? boy Kim. What up, <laughs> Tanner? Yeah, can you wipe the drool off your chin? <laughs> You ready for some pie? You hungry? I, I, I was trying to ask Jared a question. But What's your question? Go ahead. I don't even remember now. How could you forget? Because it was like five minutes ago. Oh. Oh. Man, that injury that you got really is affecting your short-term memory. That can't be it. <laughs> <laughs> you got... You took too much of your medicine before you... He was trying... Me, yeah, I do want some pie. <laughs> da, 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 so da, da, that, that pie is looking pretty good da, to you. Da, da, I'm not I think the that. Canadians up in uh, up in Vancouver need to get their uh, their Olympic track ready just in case we have. Do you have think a they plan. would consider a change of venue? If I, I don't know that you can't. I, I don't know that we have the ability to. I think the it's Olympics a really are good... so expensive. And the security is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean Mitt Romney had to save the uh, Salt Lake City ones. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, really, he actually like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like he actually did it. it yeah. yeah, you give him total control. He's really effective. When boy What's Mitt your came to the rescue? Yeah, mittens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows what you're talking about. When here. you need something done, get a Mormon. That's yes. rule of thumb. That's exactly right. Generally, I always talk to the Mormons whenever they come up to the house. Sure. Uh, there's always like they send them 
on the mission trips over to different places, which I had no idea. I always thought that they were local kids, you know. Yeah. But I, so I asked these one guys, I'm like, so did you graduate from the local high school? And he's like, no, I'm from California. And the other dude's like, I'm from New upstate New York. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, they and get you're like on their mission 18. for two years right at 18. Typically, yeah. typically they're wide receivers for BYU. <laughs> is that is that true? Just, uh, that, that's super, why all the BYU players nice are always older than that's the rest exactly of right. else. Can you clear, Steve Young and no, all the rest. On the, just, here. Just, let him, just put it on the he, table. Let he, him lay his head down. He looks tired. He looks no, like he I'm needs... Fine. No, 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 no. Lay your head down, I, Tanner. I'm just, you, you were talking forever. He's yours for the night. It's boring. So was, Come on, it's buddy. boring. <laughs> and I was on my phone. I'm not laying my head down. How would Hank Hill respond to Kim Jong-un? He would say, Well, God damn it. <laughs> that... Don't he, never he, mind. Uh, Stop. Hold on, wait, <laughs> let, let, let Maybe not. Hey, he would call. say. He would say that Japanese bastard. <laughs> America hasn't seen any real patriotism till George W. Bush went down to Japan and spit on the auto executives. <laughs> Now, is he still a cuck? Did you ever get that worked out with Nice? Man, he's a cuck. <laughs> I Dude. heard Mike Judge is bringing that show back. They needed yeah, a new they're voice. bringing King of the Hill back. You were claiming that Ronald McDonald was a cuck. That was is correct. that true? Well, I mean, you said you made the claim. Is. That was all you. Why well, is he talking a cuck? about the chicken McNuggets? Yeah, you said the That's McNuggets. That's what we want to know. Well, what do you think of their McNuggets? Well, <laughs> I can't remember exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell us in general what do you think of chicken McNuggets? McDonald's specifically. Uh, I yeah. like their nuggets. Do you? you like Did you have a bad experience the other day? Is that why you were upset? No, I never had a bad Did they have experience. a coupon? That, did you have like a coupon they wouldn't accept or something? Were you like a 45-year-old no. a housewife mm-hmm. that was angry because her, they wouldn't accept her coupon that was yeah. expired? I want to speak I, to the manager. I, I, I was a 45-year-old housewife. <laughs> was that was that whenever Dude, your hair was a little grown out? You so, had a bob cut. All right, let's, let, <laughs> these, we these, haven't these, talked about Tanner this week at t- all. T- He's had a hell of a week. That's all you've done well, this whole episode. We will, we will at the end, we'll, we'll catch up with Tanner a little bit, and we're, we're also going to talk about the pool party. Uh, oh, this is gonna be rad. Your birthday yeah. party, because Cass not coming. I was, I was out of this spot. <laughs> Some truth slipped out there. Real <laughs> talk. <laughs> well, so we'll get to the pool party at the I'm end here. I'm just kidding, Cat. The cat. Just kidding, Cat. I still love you. <laughs> Take me back. Now, uh, so China at the end of the day, China really has its thumb. They are responsible for most of the import export. Food. They're their lifeline. They're their lifeline. And so China. And honestly, it's the one thing preventing them, North Korea, from going to war with South Korea. Purely to get attention, right. and like to just randomly firing off one of their missiles into it. How would China react to them setting off a nuclear weapon? Be pissed, right? Literally pissed because that would trigger us them into war with us. Because then we would have to come. Japan would be sucked sucked in, you know, because we're in a treaty with Japan and South Korea, right. and so those are as ironclad as of treaties that exist. It, it could trigger very much a Franz Ferdinand moment. And Sony, Samsung, and Apple are all involved. Yeah, Here's and then the, Steve Jobs would not allow this kind of behavior. He would have already put an end to this. This will unite the Android and Apple get communities you, like get, nothing else. Get your Kias now. No, the, <laughs> the thing, the, <laughs> buy, buy one, get one free. <laughs> Discounted Rios today. After, after the war, they're gonna be, you're going to find some that are easily salvageable for like – Two thousand dollars, right off the factory floor. Now, here's the thing about China. China is is not impractical. Like world in World War One, you had very impractical, silly people running running the great European powers. China is a very practical country. Uh, its leadership is very practical. The ruling party is very understanding and aware of the fact that they are on the brink of social collapse and that they're also on the brink of being a superpower. And it could it, a war in the region could easily tip them into chaos, especially exactly, yeah. if they have a humanitarian crisis yeah. of people flooding into their country. Exactly, and they're in a, they're in a rough position because then all of a sudden, if they show that they're willing to fire like a nuke that say only has like fifteen tons of miniature nuke, you only. Know, but I mean, like something like because what was uh, Hi- Hiroshima was thirty five tons? Yeah, Is that right. Yeah, that sounds about right. And so, I mean, something smaller. But um, then that's a real threat. Like, it's no longer funny. Not that it's funny that they might, like, you know, just invade South Korea. But it isn't funny when they show a willingness to use a nuke because no one since us has been willing to. Right. 
You know, that's a scary world to think about. I still think that they're just simply trying to scare us into giving money. Well, what I, if, they just want to check. Well, let's say they decided to nuke South years. Korea. Now you're on a peninsula with a place you just nuked. And South Korea's geography is all mountains. 75% of the population lives in 30% of the land mass. The rest is mountains. You nuke uh, the city centers. Now you have a radioactive wasteland. You've got nowhere to go. And South Korea is like, what, triple the size of North Korea? There's no way they could make them just all of a sudden take them over and all of a sudden it's one united democratic republic, communist and republic. South Korea is wildly outclasses them in technology. It yeah. the ability to fight back. It's it, gotta be, you're going to get one shot. If you're North Korea, you get one shot to hit them. And, the, and it, you're on a peninsula with them. Right. <laughs> like, it'd right. be like if we decided to nuke Ohio, which arguably, yeah, but yeah, Michigan yeah. might. Indiana's Michi- probably going to be okay. We I mean, can, seriously, just to get rid of them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, if we're talking about Ohio. In Michigan, we'd clear up have our the roads. Upper peninsula. We could just it get rid be, of the lower. Maybe our insurance would go down if we got rid of Ohio drivers. That's a good point. There Ohio are benefits to nuking drivers. states. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all bad. Now I see where Kim's coming from. Yeah, now maybe we should hold Ohio and all our we, states around us hostage we, we with a nuclear threat. We have American yeah. troops that are, that are stationed on the border. Exactly. They, they, and they've been there since the 50s. Truth be told, this isn't a real threat because North Korea's military is predominantly missile, ba- like missile, and then they have the fourth largest military because everyone's in it. You're like, so it's a numbers yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So they have, also they have submarine capabilities. That's how they can launch their short-term ballistic missiles with nuclear warheads that have been miniaturized. However, their air defense hasn't received, their, their air force is, it, that meme of them on a merry-go-round, like in those planes, uh, have you ever seen that? The Acme yeah, yeah, Air Force, yeah. the North Korean Air Force, isn't no that far off. They are yeah. flying the same planes that they got like 40 years ago from Russia and China. And so it isn't. North uh, South Korea's air force is is modern, and so they have the ability to you know wage an aerial assault. Would meaning that all of the ballistic missiles North Korea had would be targeted at the bases in South Korea. So anyway, you end up decimating an area that is only a little bit of its inhabitable, and the the city centers there wouldn't be much left over, and you'd just have a bunch of mountains you couldn't put people in. So there's right. just no benefit to actually carrying out this attack. And hitting the United States would would trigger your last lifeline to stop all support and ally with – it would unite China, Russia, Japan, and the United States against the hermit kingdom. So what are your thoughts on Donald Trump actually, like, doing something about this? Like, I, I know – I think it's good cop, bad cop, personally. Like, I think Re- Secretary Tillerson, it, Tillerson is good cop, and he wants to force them back to the negotiating table. Right. If if he did do something, if he did do some sort of retaliation just based on threats, we weren't struck at all first, neither was any of our allies. If Donald Trump struck first, would would you think that it is justified or not? No. And, and he, uh, he, he wouldn't because it is of zero benefit to the United States to go on the offense against the hermit kingdom. It right. is like an Iraq regime change. You got to get subsidized, you know, crude oil forever. Yeah. To, I mean, you know, like you make that t- part of the terms of repayment and, re- um, uh, you know, yeah. for having a military base there. You know, there there were benefits geopolitically to Iraq regime, ch- Iraqi regime change. There isn't any. We already have a base on that peninsula. They have their iron ore, those kind of things. Yeah. What of it? No. We c- there are other markets. Yeah. So there just really isn't it. The juice isn't worth the squeeze. And, I mean, it is posturing, but at the same time you're doing that, it's all about nuclear proliferation. And his and Kim is just acting in a way where he's desperate because he actually is. Economic sanctions are way more devastating because that actually puts the entire stranglehold on um, uh, up for grabs if he can get enough uh, civil discontent among the populace. From the American side, we don't have this, uh, this, this optimism and this drive to spread freedom that we did in 2000. We've in, hopefully in learned a lesson. That's that's gone away. The George W. Bush, we can we can get them a constitution and teach them freedom, is not uh, at all in the strike, hearts of America. They could strike Guam no. with a nuke, and it would get less of a response than if it was a world trade than the World Trade Center did. Because people don't even know that Guam's is like a sixteen years right. war. Greg. People don't even <laughs> half of the people in the United States right now couldn't even point out North Korea on a map. No, they most of them think you know. So. What do they? Why do they care about Guam if they cannot point out? They can't. Point, they don't know Guam's. A, you know exactly. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like so. It'd be like, oh, it that's could be so bad for them. Is that like the Philippines with the typhoon? Uh, is that a, <laughs> is that a, a nuclear city? typhoon? Yeah, is that a city in California? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Once again, it, it, 
once again, it's because because we have the American military all over the world. That's how we're wrapped up in this. Next stuff. door. If we weren't sitting in the South Korean peninsula, if we weren't sitting in Japan on Okinawa with troops, this probably wouldn't be bothering us no. as much. And I tell you, though, that's such a, such a good point about the Winter Olympics because they're going to use that as the biggest piece of leverage they have, a mass casualty strike during a, the world stage. And he's that kind of rogue wild man that will make that threat. Given how desperate he is, that is a really nice bargaining chip for him to have in order to get. Because, you know, the whole thing is about to get them to um, slow their development of these, these ca- weapons capabilities. And so, man, he Tillerson's really banking on our allies showing solidarity on these economic sanctions to the point of desperation. If we make him desperate enough, he's yeah. going to toss that he's going to toss that out there. If they 30 percent is a depression overnight. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. you're talking about a great depression in a communist country where they are already that, on the those, brink of starvation. A sanction that big hasn't happened in quite some time. I don't know that it ever has other than Great Depression. I mean, right. you're talking a Cuban I mean, embargo. What, right. what, what yeah. kind of sanctions has Iran been dealing with? Compare this to Iran's situation economically. Oh, it'd be t- they've had 10 percent, and it hasn't. It is on um, raw materials. That so like raw materials. The reason it's so important is because those are mass employment. So, like, yeah. you know, oil, wood, timber, those kind of things. Like, it employs a lot of people who would have a tough time getting jobs in the information economy. It's, do, it's labor's it, work. If you do it on uh, inf- intellectual property and in, in, uh, things like in Iran, a lot of it was on banking, finance. We froze a lot of their assets. Um, you know, it's not like we put a tariff on dates. You know what I mean? Like, it, we, we hit their sophisticated weaponry, those type of things. We never, we never really – we didn't let capital flow in so they could grow – and um, expand that kind of thing. So if we are, if we're dropping these kinds of sanctions on North Korea, how is that different than the type of sanctions that we've had? There's this Iran. is unprecedented. I, Iran has had certain partners that they've still been able to trade with. Where in this case, like I don't have they had any restrictions with China. It's just been with other nations that they. I mean, they've there've had. been we, it's been tariff standoffs because right. they use state subsidies for key industries, and so we just end up saying, well, we're not going to let you do that to you know our low our. Uh, labor intensive manufacturing and industry so it's been a pissing match to an extent but there's this is unprecedented uh the other part that in the notes that i thought was really interesting that was a a great point is the layout and geography of south korea and and going back to what i kind of mentioned earlier what's the what, the pyrrhic victory that would essentially be a, a war should north korea w- somehow win that war uh if they were to nuke south korea what would they be nuking, and what would they be getting afterwards? Should they do that, you're Chernobyl? You're, nu- right. you're nuking Appalachia yeah. to get to get a, a, a completely desolated area. And right. yeah, now though it's but toxic there, for forty or fifty years. Right, but if they, like it said in the show notes, uh, what was it? Seventy five percent of the population lives in thirty percent of the yeah. land. Yeah, lives it's in all 30% city of the land. The rest, but is mountains. if they nuked that thirty percent of the land, what, like, what <laughs> resources? We already have talked about how they how their economy de- depends on raw materials. What resources are in the mountains that they could actually mine? Exactly. Is that, would that what be they already have? Form? Iron ore, you know, they, the raw material. Right. And really, they have the majority of the raw materials. So if you doubled what your intake can be, is that a, is that a motivator for North Korea? Right. No. It's just then survival. you have to deal with the people. They're, they're, right. they're, they're in survival mode. And yeah. I, I really do think that this is simply them trying to get another Bill Clinton check. That they got twenty years ago. You're so right. Can you explain that? Ex- explain the uh, North, the Bill Clinton check. Yeah, I wasn't alive back then. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> <It's a real laughs> How old are you, Dakota? You're Twenty-one. He was right. just a glimmer in his dad's uh, eye. <laughs> uh, all right, Tanner. Tanner, our foreign uh, foreign uh, policy correspondent, Tanner. You can explain the Bill Clinton check. Okay. All right, do it. What were they just talking about again? The Bill, Bill, Clinton, the Bill, the Bill Clinton, Clinton, Clinton check, check with the North Koreans in the nineties. Ready when you are. No pressure. Wait, with who? With the North, North Koreans, Korean. right? Oh, I thought I thought you were talking about a different one. My bad. Oh, a did different. you think the blue that dress? Was a different Korea. Yeah. You're talking about the blue dress. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Oh, okay. Not the check, the blue dress. Yeah, yeah. We talking about cigars here? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, Jer brought that, his. Have you seen that the picture of that T-shirt that's going around on Facebook? It has like Bill Clinton, and he's in like a battle torn. Uh, War torn area. Yeah, and he's uh, standing up. He's got he's like standing. He's got his hands on his hips and a knee raised. 
uh, in a battered suit with a cigar in his front pocket. And Monica Lewinsky is grabbing, is like clutching his leg like a woman in distress. His fly's undone. The, uh, Hilarious. It, it's based on the uh, old poster of... Uh, Reagan? Romancing the Stone. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie poster. Uh, yeah, and in the vein of the Reagan posters as well. Yeah, because there's one that's... Uh, an artist made a bunch of those of the former founding fathers, like George Washington holding a lightsaber, and like <laughs> Thomas Jefferson... Intergalactic battler. Jer, uh, your mother has instructed you to get Tanner a cool cloth and put it on his forehead because he doesn't look like he's feeling <laughs> he's well. He's not feeling well. I'm yeah. sorry, Mom. I, he's, he's had a, look, just like you, Mom, he's had a traumatic feel, knee injury and he's struggling crap. through. It he hurt. had, he's he probably going to have to see Dr. Ralston. It he, hurts and I didn't get any sleep last night. And he took a Benadryl or five before the show. No, he gets motion it, sickness. It, he if, took the boat here it, from, if I, from, if, from if, I, if I, if I, he rode down the White River. If I take Benadryl, it makes me feel terrible. Yes. Like, it makes me feel high. <laughs> you feel, you seem like you're high. That's but exactly I, what it is. I couldn't put my finger on it, Tanner. It's, it's not pleasant. No. Somebody asked why there was a zombie on the show. He's not a zombie. I'm, he's I'm he's merely I'm, he's larping. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get a piece of that pie. Like, <laughs> once, sounds like once I get some pie, I'll wake up. It sounds like brownies are more up your alley at this point. You know, when, when what's your when did you eat those gummies? When did I when did they <laughs> eat those gummy bears? Uh, yeah. I ate those gummy bears while you were getting your cord. Cool. That's why I told you. I told you he ate one of them. He didn't eat both of them. It's, yeah. What's your favorite pie? This is a cherry pie. What we, if you're going to pick, go to the restaurant. We're going down to Stacks. German chocolate. German chocolate that's pie. A, that's a cake. I'd have never guessed that by your haircut. Cake, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> German yeah, chocolate. I, he I said know, that's his I favorite normally, type of cake. I normally too. go in and tell I want the school shooter face. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like, Did you hear about Walmart? I, I'm always like, give me the no. Columbine. Oh, yes. <laughs> that yes. article? What was Putting the what, sign above me, the... Uh, me going, yeah, me yeah. going to court yeah. over Walmart. Oh, that's right. You're suing the uh, the Walton family. Let's He's the key witness. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that after the podcast, uh-huh. Tanner. It's not yours to cut into. It's it's I Dad's. Know. It was a gift from, from your sorry, brother's gosh. future You're wife good. to your father. What? And a shocking what? act. Olive, or, uh, an olive branch of friendship. Yes. The windmill of friendship and tolerance, basically. That's, that's what, what she, she should have made in the pie crust. Yeah. Did you see some, there's a sh- clothing brand that's trying to reclaim the swastika as a symbol like of Hindu peace and happiness? It, I'm sure that's going to go well. Oh, it, it has gotten it, noticed. It, it Originally, it, it really was. Yeah, they're that's, like, we want to reclaim the swastika. That's what yeah. the swastika like, Good luck with that. Yeah, well, it's we like want to reclaim the rainbow cool from the game. Yeah, I was going to say, you're trying to take the rainbow back, too. <laughs> I, yeah. I saw an, uh, someone, somebody snapped me a photo of an Indian man who had, uh, like, the Asian Indian. Not, Dot, not, not your feather. Dot not feather, exactly. I was trying to be politically correct. Oh, Thank is that not? Uh, no, it's not even <laughs> yeah, You one. literally have a button on your wall that says politically incorrect and proud of it. Well, that's because those are buttons that I, I collect political buttons. I've also got a George Wallace button uh, that uh, your girlfriend, your f- your future wife gave me. The Jared. lovely Sarah Potter did, Jared, uh, did when, give you a gift. When, is, when are you guys going to get married? Uh, it's, it's the weekend after Audrey and I were... Okay. Oh, oh. Now, that's a bit of a I've got, thing to do I've got a, a different buddy. wedding that weekend, but I've got a buddy. different wedding that weekend. Oh, okay. thank you. Sorry. I would love that. The Trump one. The Trump one. You did. You gave me a uh, you went, inauguration. Yeah, Tanner, if you remember, was our correspondent at the inauguration. Tanner, oh God, it always gets brought up. Yeah, Tanner uh, was our correspondent, and he dropped his phone in some uh, Coca Cola <laughs> or a coffee, 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 and uh, all I got was uh, fa- <laughs> random phones. <laughs> F K E D phone is uh, no vowels. P H N seven star. Thankfully, you F O N E S F U K D. Thankfully, you got that job over at Brisket Wireless, so now you've got a new phone and you're 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 in high cotton. Do you still have the pink phone, Tanner? Dude, I don't know where it's at. It's with your debit card. It's charging in the kitchen, I think. I no, I'm trying. To I think it's in right your now. hand. He's actually I'm got try- the live feed up I'm, right now. I'm, I'm trying <laughs> watching it. I know. I can hear it in the background. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, let me ask you this, Greg. Uh, the, the someone on the Facebook live feed said it would be senseless for all of these Koreans, regardless of North or South, to die. Why doesn't somebody just decapitate the country from the top? Why doesn't somebody take Kim out, like the CIA? or one of his own people, or the Chinese, or somebody? Why doesn't somebody infiltrate and just take this guy out? What's the problem 
with that scenario. One part of uh, Secretary Tillerson's, strat- Tillerson's strategy in order to you know try to get, lure them back to the negotiating table to slow their development of these of the ballistic uh, missile technology and nuclear prol- uh, proliferation is that the U.S. official position is we are not pursuing regime change. Right. We have no desire to do that, to topple the kingdom, or to try to deal with the fallout where you have a bunch of people who've been brainwashed and secluded from all of popular culture, from everything. And right. so they are t- the kind of civil discontent that would arise in the it, it, from a, a quick change. I mean, you're talking about having to... I, I don't know how you'd assimilate a group of people who have been had their self, sense of self like wa- evaporated, right? And then I'll say, "Welcome to South Korean commercialism and consumerism." Yeah, that would be a nix, that that would be a revolutionary type scenario. Sure, and one that would not be pretty because they would fight to the last. They they would resist you know any type of cultural assimilation or oh, yeah. see it as propaganda, oh, just yeah. based on how they've been raised. And so that's that is why you and Kim has eliminated anyone that ha, looks like they are on the rise as a potential heir. He's been killing people in the last year. He's, he's syst- systemically eliminated anyone that even could be potentially identified as a replacement. Now we we mock about him being a stupid little fat kid, as John McCain called him, but he he is he, it is amazing for a third generation that he's been able to maintain power for. Even just a few years. He has, and he has been way more mil- um, aggressive in pursuing mil- um, nuclear prolifera- or nuclear weapons because he knows it is the only thing that will allow him to maintain the kingdom. If he doesn't... <laughs> I don't even know where he got that coke from. I didn't even have He brought it. it. Oh, okay. He brought it with me. Yeah. <laughs> Just a wild coke appears. <laughs> Highly functional. He went into there. the wrong apartment, and while he was there, <laughs> hey, bro, you mind if I borrow this? You want some? Ca- I've got caffeine got that pills. Six oh six. It's like some caffeine pills. I'm fine, really. I just need to stand up. Eat okay. a piece of pie. I'm just kidding. Hey, why don't you just stand up? But, why don't you do some calisthenics for our our live stream? I can't walk, bro. Oh, that's true. Torn ACL. And that's the problem is I couldn't go to sleep last night. Right. So I was up hurts. all day today, and it's just. Been hell, but, but you're committed. You still came. I, but I I was coming no matter what. Like I haven't been to the doctor yet because I wanted to come. Here. I saw him try to use his brake the first time. He nearly got into a semi down there at the end of the highway. It was close. What? Let me ask you a question, Jer. Yes, dear leader. You let him drive after you saw that. I couldn't stop <laughs> his car. What that I, would be intervention. I, oh, so, sorry, Mom. Have you ever, I don't have police powers. I can't stop him. <laughs> you do in Henry right. County. That's very true. Saw me do what? Tanner, I'm going to sign you up for the Smith Defensive Driving Academy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say you saw me almost run into a semi? Yes. Yeah. I knew that semi was coming. You No, he was stopped. He, I, weren't. He's also the one that you flipped off. Yeah. <laughs> Tanner he is in my way. Uh, Tanner is the most jolly, happiest kid I've ever met, yeah. and I've never met anyone who more bad shit happens to him. I'm bad luck, Brian. You you Murphy, really he's Murphy's Law. He like, is. Yeah, since, since, since the beginning of August, you you and Brisket Wireless have separated. Right. Yeah. You got in that car wreck. You had a car wreck back in June. Right. Car came out and of nowhere. In May. There was the bike and wreck on YouTube video. The bike wreck on YouTube. <laughs> that, that, that was the one year anniversary. Oh, okay. What you had? Aaron Ewart thought you died and made a meme of you that and made all your family members upset. You were poisoned. <laughs> you were poisoned at two We Are Libertarians parties. Two. Three including. Three the, no, found no, out no, no, Hank no. kills a cuck. You you had too much Benadryl. That's not our fault. <laughs> all right. Now. You've drooled all over your shirt on camera in front of thousands of viewers on Facebook Live. Oh, no. <laughs> last, last week you had an appendix attack that turned into a pancreas attack. Yeah. And you spent the night in the hospital. That was such a genuine oh, no, too. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm isolating that. <laughs> He's more upset about that than having pancreatic cancer. <laughs> I forgot about the gallbladder. What's yeah. wrong with your... <laughs> no, it's not the gallbladder. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Most of the organs are failing him. He thought he had an appendicitis attack. I wasn't sure little Timmy was going to make some cirrhosis going on. Now it's cirrhosis. Pink eye, too. I'm probably going to go to, or I do, I am going to the doctor tomorrow. I have an appointment. He's going to be the, he's he's testifying against Walmart on behalf of He sued the largest retailer and employer of U.S. and Do you guys want me to tell you this story? No, let me long story short it because we want to wrap up uh, uh, the North Korea stuff here in a second. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, ta- I, ta- I, talk- I talk to this guy, and uh, he's the CEO of a clothing company uh-huh. for MMA fighters. Like, right. It, like it's- Rampage is sponsored by him. It's like I white. It's like a uh, white trash affliction T-shirts. Right. right. Ed Hardy. I mean, do, do not. I mean, I'm not, I'm <laughs> yeah. not going to talk very about them because I'm friends with the. Guy do not mention the clothing line's name though. Okay. Right. right. Yeah, I won't. So, 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 anyways, they are suing Walmart because of you. Y- yeah. Because of your report. Yeah. You you reported to the CEO. You are the star Ooh. witness in this trial. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, um, as I said, he's the star the, witness. The guy was <laughs> like, <laughs> he just Jurassic <laughs> Parked you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sound you heard in the microphone was Tanner belching as I said he was the the star witness. I feel like you just like kicked through the main lo- uh, entrance of Jurassic Park and let out a <laughs> T Rex growl. So there's going to be a civil trial but, in October, uh, and he's so, flying to federal court. They, in California. They are so, Tanner, don't take too much Benadryl before you take the stand. So, uh, <laughs> oh, I play it on. Like, so, you're going on so too like, long. <laughs> I'm so bored, the, this bro. Lawyer, this lawyer this calls me. This is going to be a discovery. Hello. This, Everybody let him talk. This lawyer calls me, like, probably two months ago. And was like, hi, I'm blank, blank, representing blank, blank. <laughs> blank in a lawsuit against Walmart. <laughs> and he said... You told me that you had sent Alden blank right. a picture of a uh, MMA or an MMA clothing brand's uh, logo with oh this is a trademark w- infringement suit with no oh, okay. um, clothing underneath and if it was it was a knockoff gotcha and I, and I said yes I did. Blah, blah, blah. We we talked for like a half hour. He called me the other day. We talked for like forty minutes. Right. And then he made me write a actual statement. I have the statement. I've read the statement. You're a beautiful writer. See so the yeah, deposition. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And, Sworn uh, statement. You're going to be the first person and, ever to end up in prison as a result of no, testifying at a civil trial. Bad that, luck. That's that's seriously like, um, like all of that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of, that's I've seen the Rockford Files, and I'm very concerned about your safety. So we the, we have the, the Rockford Files. The private investigators will come after you. He's you just 20. Need, you need to look out for yourself, Dude, my friend. We message all the time. We talk on the phone. Like he's got my phone number. This is the Walton, so. Huh? Walmart, like this is Arkansas money. Two hundred year old pickle companies. Have you seen what the Clintons have done to people in Arkansas? I, th- I think Walmart's going to lose. You're going. You're going <laughs> after a future employer. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm not working for Walmart. Th- thanks for believing in me, Spangler. <laughs> it's going to be Purdue Mart when are, he's done with them. Are the Walmart's cucks? Are the Walton's cucks? Dude, <laughs> you know, rumor on the street. That, <laughs> says that <laughs> Sam Walton wears a chastity and watches his wife fuck a black dude. <laughs> Is that in your sworn statement? Now before, I have to... I have to. <laughs> you should drop that truth bomb in federal court I'll, as a key witness. I will. I will. I'll say before, it He's a Bernie <laughs> bro, bro. <laughs> before he said that, he looked to his left <laughs> and looked to his right <laughs> to make sure nobody could hear him. Yeah. <laughs> Sam Walton's been dead for 30 years. <laughs> you need to fast forward to an hour 14 on the video and watch him as he tells that story. <laughs> My God. Uh, Let me tell you about Walton. Well, dear leader, thank you for having us on your show. This has been incredible. <laughs> Incriminating or incredible? Incredible. <laughs> We've already been used in several different trials. It's very true. We... We're on the public record. <laughs> now, Jamie wants to know how high Tanner is. He's not high at all. 
He's he's poisoned. Uh, he's been he's another no, poison. I've been poisoned. No, he's <laughs> had Benadryl. That's what we. No, Rachel Valor overuses it, Robitussin. I was just with Rachel, and she did. She did give me a drink. Was, I've been, we've had this talk before. She overserves him Robitussin. She gives him two of those little cups. <laughs> he's very sensitive. She, she gives me some pill that has a. Uh, 200 on the back of it. I don't know what it Quailude is. Quaalude 787. <laughs> yeah, Quaalude. She got some old ludes. <laughs> Go ahead, drink up. Have another uh, hit on that Pepsi there. Uh, old, old old Bill Spangle here. So uh, Now, yeah, so to finish up with North Korea, I mean, we pretty much covered most of it. Uh, well, I mean, but, but, I do think it's weird that the media is like, playing up how serious this is. Well, that's because they want ratings. Do you think so? Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those things, though. It can become self-fulfilling prophecy. Are we still pushing. fighting ISIS? Is that still happening? I think Trump destroyed them. The okay. Mob. Well, right. The Mob. Took care of it. Yeah. Right. So they, they want this for ratings just like they wanted Trump for ratings? How'd that work out? Now they're beholden to him, to be yeah. honest. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Just but I mean, yeah, Obama. like war can be self-fulfilling in that, you know, at, language matters. The language you use matters. And it's one thing. For a young and untested president, or, you know, an early a person early in his presidency to not want to be challenged, but it's quite another to do it with somebody who's at you know you don't somebody up against a corner that's desperate. You don't want to push too much because they have nothing to lose if they're right. on the precipice of collapse. Right. Then it's like, well, why wouldn't we fire the nukes? I, you're gonna. It's Saddam. We're gonna get if Saddam anyway. had nukes, nukes at the end. You think he's gonna fire him? Hell yeah, he would have. Yeah, absolutely. He was done either way. It, look what ISIS has done to the places they controlled to all the artifacts that remained. They exactly. blew up that tower of ball that was uh, one of the oldest mosques in all of Iraq. I mean, they. they you have no reason to preserve. And that's the worst kind of enemy. You know, Nothing especially when they have nukes. Yeah, recreational make nukes. <laughs> Would you ever use a nuke, a nuke if you lived in an encapistan? <laughs> yes. Greg. Would you? Well, dep- if it got real, most of the time I would hire private McMercenaries. But what if you? <laughs> what if your neighbor was Kim Jong Un? Would you fire right now a nuke at him, based on what he's done? No, we'd be friends. Are you chill like so, Rodman and him. Yeah. So Ray Kroc is your pal. Well, like <laughs> if he was Sam Walton, not so much. And he got a, like, say he had a tree growing and one of his branches was, like, over my yard line. Yard line. I'd probably send a McMercenary to kill his whole family. But if, like... <laughs> he does that himself, you're you, fine. You'd but, be John McAfee. But, <laughs> if, but, but if somebody, like... Live and let live. <laughs> if, I, if I was in a car and somebody, uh, like, hit me, like, rear-ended me, I would take out an RPG or a nuclear missile. The appropriate thing to do is to sentence them to be your butler. Who? The person that hit you. That's the way it went down. No, I would use the recreational McNuke. <laughs> do they have medical uh, nuclear warheads yet? <laughs> is that the way that we're going to get these? Uh, we're well, going to uh, uh, cannabis uh, hydrogen bombs. Our, our, <laughs> we're our, just going to make the whole population now, high as shit. Wait, and then we're going to make this. Stuff. We're going to kill me. We to will me, cure honestly. entire populations of glaucoma. What we're going to do... My Second Amendment is not fulfilled until I can have... Your own nu- personal nuke. ...nuclear nuclear missiles. I, I, listen, I think of all the people at this table, you're the one I would give a nuclear missile to. Tanner, I think you should probably go home and start working on building it now. And if you get it built, <laughs> you can have it. Have you ever seen Back to the Future? <laughs> Find some Libyans and tell them that you're going to build them a bomb, but just give them pinball machine parts. <laughs> 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 and then get a DeLorean. Also a bulletproof vest. Someone That's told very me important. I looked like the Unabomber. I don't know what the Unabomber Ted Kaczynski? <laughs> you don't look like him. You're well-groomed. Are you if anything, Ivy you are well-groomed. Hmm? Are you Ivy League educated? Old Ted was. I know you do like to use the postal system like Ted. But... <laughs> hey, stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's too far. Too far, man. You leave Ted out of this. Now, what is the appropriate response to all of this for a libertarian, Greg? For a libertarian, that's a good question because I, I asked, you know, when I asked Ron Paul the same question about what was the red line in Syria when we were out at DePaul. In 2013. Yeah, in 2013. He, he, wait, he had a tough time because it's one of those things where when t- if you wait until they're at your door, it's too long. Yeah, exactly. So what role do you play in trying, and at what point do you exhaust every single preventative measure, like economic sanctions, um, you know, trying to stop, 
trying to culturally, or, you know, trying to use, like, CIA tactics of, you know, fomenting discontent like we did in Venezuela, you know, to, to topple the regime internally through you, cultural things. You keep things. talking until they draw blood, and then you wipe them off the face. But that's the thing is they fire a nuke before you don't get that chance, usually. Well, and if they hit California, it's a win-win. I'm hearing a lot of intervention from you people. No, no, no. But I mean, <laughs> do, do you do you not do? You, are they an existential threat? No, absolutely not. Life not. would go on for everyone except in Los Angeles. I think that this is a, a this is a great point that you made in the in the when they say that this is an existential threat to the United States. You made a great point about the, America's ability to survive a nuclear blast. Yeah, can you can you talk about that? Well, I mean, bit? we're not a an urban. We're not like South Korea. We aren't urban. Uh, you know, there our uh, our population is dispersed. Twenty percent in rural areas that be unaffected. We aren't on the brink of collapse or any type of political or socioeconomic instability. There isn't. A, there isn't a Weimar Germany where you, a Hitler can rise or a nineteen seventeen where a Lenin can rise. There aren't these factions. Yeah, in the, the collapse in political trust and right. you know warring you know civil war almost esque moments and then Chuck Schumer will rise. That's that's the risk. <laughs> right. Chuck so, Schumer. Apparently he just likes or to Amy. deploy the deep state on people for leaks. Oh really? Remember when he said uh, when Trump criticized the intelligence community and said, well yeah. their intelligence record hasn't been great. You know, then he goes, I would not the deep state will wreck you. He said that on MSNBC and it looks pretty pretty clear that yeah. that's the case. But um so, No, I mean so we're we're not a concentrated area. We only have what Ten, ten cities in the United States have over a million people. Yeah, right. Indianapolis is like the fourteenth largest city in the country. Right, we're just and we're, it's not that big. We're an evenly dispersed country. So where would you attack? I mean, you would. Are you going to hit Alaska? I mean, if that's your capabilities with your long term, they're, they're going to have technology? to hit. Uh, if they can get across Pacific, they're going to try to hit San Diego. Right. Or and they're going to hit one of the left coast. If you cities. hit, yeah. So you would hit like Orange County, and then right. Orange County hope for the fallout hits Southern Los Angeles and then Northern San Diego, and right. then you wipe out a good four million. They're not positioned to do it, but their ultimate goal would be Philadelphia, New York, Washington, Boston, right? Those, those cities, you know, Baltimore, those cities over there, and everything would continue on. We would just not be able to go. You know, you wouldn't want to go do Grauman's Chinese Theater. After Kim Jong Un sent a you know a got, little a targeted nuke at them, right. but everything would go on in the United States. Life would go on. Russia survived, you know, with Chernobyl, the nuclear meltdown. Nine eleven was incredibly traumatic for our country. But it we, united us. It, it, it changed us, and and especially it changed our government. But Correct. It, we still continue, you know, even though our government got more, uh, the deep state grew. Uh, it still, you know. We're still doing this podcast. Right. It's, you know, we're not being black bagged for dissidents, you know. God, I wish they would. <laughs> you, have to, you have to realize that there's always going to be risk in life, but you can't live in fear. Right? It is. And Nuclear war is just scary because of if you, you get hit, you're going to want to hit back. Sure. That isn't really an option because of South Korea and they're our ally. So we hit North Korea with a nuke. All of a sudden, you start cooking your allies. You know, and then Japan probably yeah. gets some of the, you know, Fukushima meltdown radiation. Yeah. I guess that'd be payback since we got some of that bad fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hate when you get bad fish. <laughs> no, but I mean, no. If that... they hit the United States, then you're fighting back. And then, What's and then you're, the response? You're gonna, uh, you, if they hit the United States, you're they're done. I think that at that point, you, the Congress truly declares war. And but we can't attack. use a nuke. I'm oh, sure we can. No, because South Korea. The nuclear fallout. You would, kill, you would end up you would end up cooking our ally. The, we don't have they, these small nukes. If they nukes. use a nuke on the United States... They're also going to use one on South Korea at the same time. Right. They're not going to hit the United States. South Korea is who they would hit. If they get to the point of the absolute brink of collapse to the point where there's nothing to lose, it is going to be unification of the Korean Peninsula is the primary goal because that's our last stand to maintain power. Do you watch Man in the High Castle yet? No, I haven't. Better get back to it. Is that what happens? You better get back to it. Does Hitler win? Hitler did win. I don't watch movies, but I watched Seinfeld with Jared the other day. Right. Seinfeld has a lot of parallel. <laughs> Steve Bannon actually was one of the owned some of the rights to Seinfeld, and so he made his fortune. Now, really, I had no yeah, idea. That's how he made his Goldman Sachs fortune. Wow! And then he got in trouble in Steve divorce Bannon court. Bannon made money off the Blood Boy. He said he didn't want his I kids really, to go to school I with whiny Jews. Watching Seinfeld. I think for an American libertarian, there's absolutely no excuse to uh, advocate for any military intervention, gen- in, in, generally, but in this case specifically. Uh, I think that all of the uh, – the burden lies with China. China has the most lose, to lose in this situation. If they're going to be a superpower like they want to be, they need to learn they to are. be to, – to, they, they need to learn to be global leaders and regional leaders first and foremost. That was really what America – I mean that's kind of what 
Trump's plan, but that was also what a lot of Manifest Destiny was, is control your own hemisphere. We, we obviously don't want to get drug into a war. We, we have these packs that were chosen for us long ago. And I guess that's the question that we'll have to talk about on a different episode that every libertarian, I think, has to wrangle with in the modern era is do you honor treaties like the ones that we have with South Korea and Japan? I mean, if you are a libertarian president and you are faced with the choice of uh, South Korea just got hit with a nuke. No, it did not affect Americans, but America has made a treaty that says we should go to war. Do you as a libertarian president go yeah, go to war? Do you or do you not? And that's a question that I think that people that's that's one of the that's why it's easy to be a libertarian and you know, Liberty LARP in New Hampshire, but it's hard to talk about to, current, to talk about current events because if you're Gary Johnson and you're sitting in the White House and you're faced with this very real potential Yes, theoretically and philosophically, the sanctions that were passed against North Korea by the UN are an act of war. If that happened to the United States, if that happened to Russia, it's 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 in in Ron Paul's ter- world that is an act of war because you are, and so. So you, you feel know, that economic sanctions are intervention? Absolutely, they're intervention. Yeah. You're you is a boycott intervention? Yeah. Any. It's it's an economic intervention. Uh, is it you, grounds for war? Uh, are you okay, Tanner? Yeah, makes total sense though. Because you because. is it an is it grounds for war? N- no, but is it intervention? Absolutely. You yeah. you as a nation, if you're placing sanctions or if you're driving through the UN sanctions on a country, you're intervening in their ability to uh, conduct commerce, which affects their economy, and it always has the opposite effect. The American economy, the world economy, capitalism, capitalism is what lifts these countries into a different place. Capitalism is what has changed China for the better, and it's what made America better. It's what made the world better over the last 250 years, 300 years. And so when you were when you were disrupting the markets and the flow of commerce and people, then you are deterring the very thing that you're seeking, which is peace. And now so, you have a regime, though, that will absolutely refuse to allow the intertwining of markets or – because it can't. Of course. Communist systems, they only work in closed systems. It's not like – you know, it's like Apple versus – the Apple versus Microsoft back in the old days. Right. The reason Apple wanted a closed system was because it could be perfect. It could be their own little kingdom where there wouldn't be viruses. Everything would be plug and play. There would no, be no need to have adapters and worry about different you know, system requirements. It's the ideal that usually doesn't exist. That's why I have all Apple products. It is superior. And the only reason that they're, you know, they, made, they had to open up to the compatibility. They right. allowed people to write for their platform. They became the de facto standard. Right. You know, but they had to learn the hard lesson of their founder being fired from the company he started in a garage. Right. You know, and so with, with, with communists, it's a lot really like... he really got what was coming to him, didn't he, Greg? I mean, yeah. He got the Tanner thing. <laughs> what? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Bum knee. Yeah, uh, <laughs> towards ACL yeah, ended up costing yeah, him everything. Yeah, JP yeah. says so. Basically, yeah, I'm so, okay with uh, a North Korean dictator brainwashing his people and threatening t- the attack on the U.S. Yeah, guess what? Those are words, you dummy. Yeah, like, they're just <laughs> locker room words. <laughs> I grabbed her by the pussy one time. Right. <laughs> if, she wanted it. I'm a big star. If if uh, it is you, you as a citizen of the United States are required to basically control your government. It is the responsibility of the North Korean people to dictate what government rules over them or any government that rules over them. It is not for you and I or Greg to sit here and dictate how the North Korean people are supposed to live. The North Korean people, by not overthrowing their government, choose to have a dictatorship and choose to be brainwashed. And that is not my decision. That's their decision. Does a battered spouse, though, know that they're battered that stays? So who they feel like they can't leave? It doesn't matter. At, at, at what point, just because you... And I'm not, I'm not saying I'm advocating for intervention. I'm just saying, like, there's, like, a mindset that sets in where you re- lose the option. To, uh, you, f- you forget you have choice. Uh, uh, in some ways, yes. And, and, and uh, no, I don't, I don't agree with you. But even, like, for battered spouses and like battered women? 
I have had plenty of experiences with battered spouses, not mine, but uh, in helping, it, that's really- She wouldn't leave. <laughs> no. no way. <laughs> no, it's something that- What did I do? It, it is, uh, I have a special place in my heart for helping women who are abused. And I can tell you that without fail, every single one of them knows what's going on at all times. They just don't make the choice to leave because they're too afraid. But there never is- there's never a brainwashing. It, it, it happens early on, but there's always it's always like, well, this doesn't feel right, but okay. And it's just these little tiny slips of, ah, you know, that FISA court doesn't seem that good, but yeah, okay. They are you three generations in, though, I think is what Greg's trying to say. Well, right. I just mean, like, is for some it, people, yeah, it's just that it, it, you, you're brainwashed to the point of does choice exist, and it's death if you're not right. Like, if you don't win, you lose. The real That's ones. the way revolution works. Yeah, guess True. what? The American Revolution, uh, every person who signed their name to the Declaration of Independence their was, death warrant if was they didn't win. literally signing their death warrants. Every single one of them were going to be hung. And if they didn't win, that's how revolution and works. And we wouldn't have won without French support. Like, we needed the support of, exactly. of, of others. So, like, if we could identify a group, of an uprising group, like a Green Party in Iran. We should probably check with Dennis Rodman. I'm sure he's got confidence. The worms plugged in. I Nobody's could, got swag like the Rodman. Nobody the can save us but Dennis Rodman. So, so yeah, I, I, do, I do agree that uh, – I don't agree that there should be any military intervention. None. That there's absolutely no <laughs> American or human interest for us initiating any force here. And they, if you were to win and topple the regime – you would have no idea what to do with their society. Right. Right. None. That's another vacuum. It's, it's for You've them. got another Iraq on your hands. That's for them to decide. And, and they would have no idea that they were allowed to. Yeah, Iran is a little bit different Hold than on. that because at least uh, we could see Iran. And there's a resistance movement. Tanner. And we know who they are. What, what did you say? I said I'll, I'll smoke a half zip. Half a zip? Yeah. What is a zip? An ounce. An ounce of what? We... Weed. <laughs> <laughs> have you been smoking marijuana this whole time? No. 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 This is what's wrong with the Korean Peninsula. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, he's literally North Korea. <laughs> he's, he's very placid, though. I, this is I, like I, the I older. Pro- uh, I, I promise. <laughs> I promise, <for> you. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a 1986 uh, Lisa too. He's it'll, a... <laughs> it'll never happen again, Ma. <laughs> I don't agree with you. I think it will. She's a bad influence. It will. Well, we're gonna. She told you you had glaucoma and you didn't. And I don't approve of that. We're gonna give uh, Tanner some pie and pour him into the back seat of his car so he can take a nap. Well, once again, dear leader, thank you for I, having I, the Balance Like a Liberty I, podcast I, I cast with you. I know that Dakota and I have really enjoyed this show. <laughs> he, he tried so hard to be entertaining, and he tried too hard. What the the first rule of entertainment that I teach every intern, every new person that comes to work for me at at my day job, at the Bob and Tom show, is don't get fancy. Don't try too hard. Just just don't try. Nobody because likes you, to try hard. When you try, you get North Korea. So. <clears throat> so uh, I, I called him Magellan on the way in here. <laughs> now, uh, we have a big pool party coming up on uh, Saturday. We do. Uh, Tanner's, uh, Tan- we're having a big celebration for, of, of life for Tanner. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Hold on, I think he's celebrating. <laughs> Tanner, what did you say? I said, yeah. My, uh, my friend Trevor is going to drive up from Alabama. Is just he really? really? Going to drive up all the way from Alabama just to. What town? Uh, Huntsville. Oh, good. Okay, I was like, man, if he does Greenbow. Oh, or Birmingham. No, that'd be a hell- hellacious drive. Gonna drive all the way from Huntsville, Alabama, just to just to hang out That's with good the Bob Hoggins. I'm excited. That's news to me. I'm very excited. Another to meet Confederate. Him. That's just what you've always wanted. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jeremiah uh, put too many rules on this party. It's always you can never have a homeschool or planning parties, can you, Greg? Well, the last one got wild and out. Apparently, no, it didn't. It was a very boring party. The there was, was a, there was a certain party. someone who got very wild. No, 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 no. Here, I have a bone to pick with uh, the boss hog of liberty. He loves when we came here for our public apology as well. I'm glad we're getting to this portion of the show. Is this the yes. part where everyone apologizes? No, there will be no apologizing for me. Oh, really? No, really. Dakota I... and I will take the floor now. This is boss no, hog no, no, liberty no, no, no. cast uh, <laughs> show number seventeen. He's like. 
Everybody's off except Greg and I. <laughs> Welcome to the Hermit Kingdom. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we just no. turned the lights off on the North Korean Peninsula. See, How about that? There's two Jeremiah's. There's Jeremiah, the the wonderful, caring friend, the man who is here, who is uh, participating, the man who is uh, does a great podcast, and then there's Content Jer, yeah, and uh, <laughs> he is now under protest on the uh, on the show. Uh, he is writing notes on the uh, Facebook Live. You can watch this at YouTube. Now, Greg, he, he two parties ago, was having the time of his life bear wrestling his brother, as we've covered in previous episodes, and screaming out, content! Vegas Jer. But then last time, it was very part, uh, very, uh, you cannot <laughs> silence freedom, his protest sign says. Please clap. I have ripped up your signs. They mean nothing to me in my kingdom. <laughs> and uh, But then we had another party where one person just had a little too much fun. I thought it was an appropriate amount of fun, to be quite honest. I imagine you did. No, you're not on mic. Uh, here, go, let, all right, go ahead, Dakota. I don't think it was an appropriate amount of fun. It would have been appropriate had it been just a regular wall party. Or dancers. It's, yeah. But, Instead, it was Jeremiah's birthday party with Rex and Susan Bell. All of his family. I blame his, Rex, like, actually, to be honest. His, ni- <laughs> his 90 year old great aunt was there. Which was, she was hooked up to some life support thing, and I went to the bathroom first, and it said, Do not unplug, you will kill my aunt. So my first inclination is, I should unplug this because it'd be hilarious, because I didn't think that was real. Nothing's funnier than watching someone Content desperately fight for their life. Glad I didn't do that. <laughs> I am, uh, I'm just offended. The, see, here's the problem. You can't invite everybody to your party because everybody – you can't invite normal people and us to a party. Normies and Aspies. Nor- normies and libertarians don't mix. And now everybody at this party <laughs> is upset that uh, he says, don't – what does it say? Don't bean flick at birthday parties. And there was a hot – It was tw- a front swipe. There was a hot 20-year-old blonde eh. who might or might not have done eh. a strip tease on Greg and I. And uh, libertarians are mad about it. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. What'd you, what'd you uh, say, Tanner? They're not real libertarians, are they? Right, no, because real libertarians love what, Tanner? Fucking what, the men? Fucking the men? I don't what, think... Wait, like... The, I don't think that came out men, right. The men libertarians? Or, or oh, what do they like? Yeah, what, what do they like? What libertarians, libertarians like? like playing World of Warcraft. Sitting on their ass. What does it say? Lo- looking Spangle at tits. is a beef thief. I'm not In more Jesse, ways than one. I'm not Jesse Riddle. Toby Keith's songs at, are fine. <laughs> All right. Well, let's start wrapping up. It's uh, it's gonna be a fun party, Jerry. We always have fun at your pool parties. Your mic is back on. Well, thank you, dear leader. Right. How do you podcast in Braille? <laughs> that was very. <laughs> That was very difficult. That was well done. <laughs> uh, I thought you were an offensive coordinator for the Colts. <laughs> <laughs> Been right. studying, studying with Peyton Manning over here. We have, uh-huh. All right. Final thoughts for this episode, Jeremiah. <clears throat> really appreciate you letting, uh, you letting me showcase the talent of Henry County, Indiana. <laughs> uh, the best and brightest are what we have to offer. Uh, this, is, uh, this has been fun for us. Uh, I hope that uh, your listeners, the uh, ten to 20,000 that are listening at this moment, plus the live stream uh, crowd, uh, check out the Boss Hog Liberty podcast. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's it's micro-focused on to Henry County, Indiana, but I think it applies to everybody. Well, a lot of fun with, uh, with with locals in the community, and you get to know Dakota and myself. And then Tanner's on it a lot. Tanner's been on three or four times. We're, we're negotiating the contract with his agent right now to see if we can make a return appearance or not. Got to wait till the Walmart there, thing's settled. That we don't could be know a toxic how attachment. things are going to go, but uh, <laughs> yeah. we're trying. He literally looked I mean, up at me just a moment ago when you said Tanner's on it. He looked up, so raised confused. his head, raised up his eyes, and he looked just like a sloth. <laughs> <laughs> if you've seen Zootopia, he was the sloth. <laughs> I am looking forward to the Whenever party. you said agent, I was like, what? <laughs> agent. I have an agent. He's like, terrible. Agent? We're, we're going to have, uh, at this pool party coming up, uh, Greg is going to provide karaoke. Yeah, I have a karaoke machine. We, we don't have lyrics, though. we got to get that worked out. I think we know the lyrics. You think so? We've got that memorized. i got an iPad. I feel like it's, and every time, people know it by heart when they're singing in the car alone, and then the second there's a crowd, 
all of a sudden it's like a we'll blankness. Work, we'll get, I, we'll get an iPad and a and a yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, maybe a mic stand or two from Spangle. Sure. You end up being Jeff Bibbert at a karaoke yeah. bar singing yeah. social <laughs> like, to John Mayer. Awkward. So anyway, it, it, this should be fun. Like and subscribe us on on Facebook. Give us a try. Uh, I'm looking forward to the uh, the We Are Libertarians bump, and uh, it's going to be big. When are we going to do our appearance on BHOL? You guys name I've it. been trying to line my dad up for weeks. <laughs> well, I, it, Andre, it's the but now that the pot, now that the peace we made been a peace, peace, peace pie. She, she made peace. a peace pie, and I have a gift for her that I'll be giving to her. The Saturday. Uh, the wedding is coming up very soon for Dakota. There's been a lot of wedding talk, a lot of wedding there planning. Is, and not Jeremiah, for me, not Jeremiah for me at all. hasn't even signed, hasn't even ordered his suit yet. You were going to measure me. That was going to be live on the air. <laughs> Do you lay left or right? I ran into Ted, I ran into Ted Western getting fitted for a tux, uh-huh. and he has a wedding. It, it was the wrong size, and he needs it for Saturday. Right. And so he was, like, fretting at there. And he told me that his dog somehow peed on its drapes, and instead of just, like, at the bottom, it lifted up its leg and hit mid-drape. <laughs> like, right at the window level and just soaked it <laughs> all the way down. Poor, poor Tad and Kona. <sighs> Uh, Dakota. Yeah, so please uh, check it out. Check out the Boss Hog of Liberty. It is a it is a fine little podcast produced here on the We Are Libertarians Network. You can pretty much just go to iTunes, search We Are Libertarians, and you'll find all of our podcast selections. Uh, make sure you check that out. Uh, Dakota Davis. Uh, I have become friends on Facebook with Audrey's sister. <laughs> have you really uh, tonight? Yeah. Lindsay Lindsay Peavy and I are friends now. Well, let's get the whole story there. Yeah, you request. You sent her a friend request first, right? Uh, no, no, uh, I, uh, no, I did. Yes, because when Audrey said I couldn't come to the wedding, I said, you know what? I'm gonna friend request your little sister. And it's, yeah. you know, usually preteens don't use Facebook. Cat, Cat said it was creepy, and I said, how do you think that you're on the podcast uh, now? Because we were teasing Chloe, and I friended. Don't you. say we. Do I, not say we. I. <laughs> Yeah. I never wanted a third co-host. I've never this said. Is, this never doesn't appear to be a said, pattern, oh, dear if leader. we only had one more. You find the younger <laughs> sister. You did this with my sister. I sure did. But yeah. That was an aquatic attack, really. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Today, <laughs> I last, that last, was, that was last, last week, year. Spangle texted my little sister. Uh, last week, I texted your little sister. How yeah. old is she? She's 18. How All did right. you get at the phone number again? Two, two years till eligibility. I put in a group chat. <laughs> oh, oh, not very, funny. very oh, innocently. I was trying to send her phone number to Cat. And then it was like, you know, Cat, you need to take my sister under Arguably your wing. Arguably, Cat's creepier than Spangle. It, it, seriously. I would <laughs> Not be, kidding. I would treat her with respect and dignity. Cat is an animal. They're going to go to Muncie Teachers College together. Yes, they are. <laughs> no, I, uh, I had a nice... Chirp, chirp. <laughs> I had a nice conversation with cluck, your cluck. sister. Yeah. Yeah. Just laying the... She, gr- I, I saw You guys her... actually DM'd? Oh, we had a uh, I had a full conversation. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. Again, Greg. Two, That's a boundary. Two years till eligibility. So. <laughs> I, I you mean her, expiration? No. I saw her last night, and she said, "You know, I got a text the next morning that said miss you." <laughs> <laughs> I know. We had this long conversation, and then just like I was like, "You know what? I'll amp the creepy up to ten and make and make this a great story. I will just write." Miss and then the letter U. <laughs> I'm so glad. You know, so glad she did mention did it. Did you see what the first message was? Yeah, I saw the first message. Yeah, where he said, "Hi, my name's Greg Lenz." Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, did you you heard this story on episode 216? Yeah. Or on on episode 16? We're not we're not 200 yeah. episodes ourselves yet. Yeah. He, his I mother, love. Oh, trust me, I listened to Audrey when his, the topic of my um, appearance text, at the wedding. Texts the person that's raised him as his father. And says, "No, Greg Lenz is your actual father." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. She, I texted, it, and I, then I, I see her yesterday, and I'm out to you with my mom and my dad and my sister and Audrey. It's your, it's his birthday. Yeah, yeah. his birthday party. And um, I said, I cannot believe none of us could believe that you actually texted Dad that Greg Lenz is my actual father. <laughs> I know. And she said. No, I texted your sister. And my dad's sitting there, and he said, no, you texted me. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting at the Newcastle Elks Club, and I take $5 on my wallet. She's sitting, I, I'm sitting here, and she's sitting with Spangle. You're Spangles. not milk. I'm a, I'm a guest of, uh, of, oh, you were, okay. of Mr. Yeah. Davis. I was going to say, that's an invasion. So I, <laughs> Inside I, I, job. I, I give her, I've, I've known his, his. They're like the Masons in Henry County. I've known Mrs. Davis for three minutes, and I <laughs> offer her $5 to tell Mr. Davis that Greg Lenz oh my God. is the actual father. <laughs> and, she <doesn't>. and she does it. <laughs> I thought it was Bailey. I thought it was the sister. I didn't realize that it was. And she took. She didn't take the money, I, but I put it on the table. She texted. And, 
And it was, uh, I'm talking with my hands. Uh, like yes, you are. I love and to bring families together. And as we found out, she full on thought that she was texting my sister. <laughs> 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 Whose Spangle has been sliding DMs into. Yes. And adding on Facebook. She and said, probably she liking said, spring break photos from two years not, ago. I didn't add the sister. The, I didn't add the sister because I thought she, I could tell she was creeped out. But Imagine that. But, <laughs> but you added uh, this future sister-in-law. But his sister-in-law... The, she she's she's a little troll I can tell so I added her a, and then she denied the request after his fiance said don't add him he has autism and he's creepy <laughs> that was which only, I've been impressed by Audrey Joe because I it's been a good this, week for your relationship I wrote this heartfelt thing about how I enjoyed her friendship and it didn't matter that I wasn't invited to the wedding and I understood because it's tough weddings are tough you know really laying it on thick and she wrote still not coming <laughs> <laughs> and so and so she texted her sister and said I have autism and I'm creepy and only one of those things is true she said don't add Chris he's very creepy plus he has crippling autism <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yes. and so I he said he literally can't walk he's so <laughs> autistic so she, he's in the state tanners in all the time <laughs> <laughs> she denied the request I sent I sent a message in all caps that said I do not have autism but I might be a little creepy <laughs> and uh but add me anyways, and she added me today, so uh, we're going to be Things are getting serious, you might say. You're going to be my stepdad, Greg. Well, all right. I mean, I'm being given family members like Goodwill, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right, uh, Dakota, any final thoughts? Uh, uh, nothing much, really. We'll have Thanks you guys on again in, in, uh, uh, in a different... You know, I Less need, inebriated state yeah. by one... <laughs> <laughs> I need to so that way you can be a little more, you know... I mean, you'll be my... We'll be stepbrothers. Oh, yeah. Bunk beds, bro. Can't wait for them to share bedrooms. You gotta send, get... Send me anonymous messages on the, the new app. Sarah, Sarah, huh? Sarah, huh? Did you get the Sarah. one about Bittner? Yeah. Was that you? I knew. <laughs> <laughs> you had... So you've been, you've been getting these DMs for about a week. There's this the Sahara thing that everybody can send. It, it, like, private... Anonymous messages. There are various incarnations over the years. I don't do it because I'm way too fragile. Give us, give us the top three or four. And, Dakota. And a lot of, a lot of Dakota is gay. Oh, uh, huge fan of dick. It's like if you wanted a four chan where you were one of the threads and you said go, and just <laughs> right. let all these anonymous people say whatever right. they wanted. Here, here's one. I'm sorry that I have to be the one to tell you this. Everyone hates you, and you should just stay home on Saturday so we can make fun of you while you're not there. Jer wrote that. No, I did not. Audrey. There's one that I wrote, and he, he figured it out earlier. Oh, he did right yeah. away. Yeah, he figured out the one that I wrote. You are a faggot, and I hope Jesse rakes your uh, face. I, I, <laughs> Seth is the worst. I already bought a dildo. That was me. Uh, you're so sexy. Is this one? Isn't that crazy? Uh, here's one from uh, Chris Spangle. I've always had a crush on you, and the fact that you're a libertarian makes you even better. I didn't actually. Write I watched him write that. You didn't? No, I didn't actually. Write no, he wrote it. I Here, have the document. Here's one that says your friends text 18 year old girls. <laughs> <laughs> that was your dad. <laughs> Not anymore. Uh, quite a few of them about my beard, which I don't have anymore. Audrey. And, uh, I'm not Here, here's I'm Dakota and Audrey. I plan on bringing Morgan as my plus one to your wedding reception. Is that okay? <laughs> I've made it clear that she is to avoid Greg at all costs, as well as making her promise not to perform her lap dance routine on any of the other attendees. I can't wait to help you celebrate your special day. That was Bittner. Signed, Bittner. And he, he only, bit, of course... Would sign their name to an anonymous to anonymous. Anonymous. I want credit for my anonymous oh, He was homeschooled for like six months. Oh, my God. Only homeschooler that had a personal short bus. <laughs> and a what? And a Kentucky water <laughs> yeah. guy. Did you ever have a mullet, Jeremiah? You seem only, like a, a prime only person who is. No, I. Been... I had the Trent Lott haircut from ten on. <laughs> I was. He's, just, yeah. he's the only person to have ever been taken out of school for being too rowdy, and only have lasted six months with his own parents. <laughs> met him. No. Uh, all right, Tanner. Uh, t Tanner. Final thoughts for this episode? I have one in mind, but it's You got anything to announce about your birthday party Saturday night? Yeah. Sunday morning. Everyone's having a birthday party Saturday night. What's the address? I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to edit it out either. <laughs> you're a hero. Tanner, you're a hero. Be there and be fucking a bitch. <laughs> 
Yeah. You uh, want to do a little preview of the Toby Keith you'll be performing? Let's 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 keep that then for the uh, for the main thing. Do, uh, I thought you might want to do though uh, the Taliban song. Yeah. Or how do you like me now? Oh, yeah. Always in love, living in my radio. Somebody started this song off for me. American girl, American guys love stand up and salute. Always recognize <laughs> me still when I'm flying. That's like an automatic dance, so we can sleep. I feel like he's playing at half speed tonight, Chris. <laughs> My dad served in the army. And I was just like, I don't know who will fly out in our yard. Till the day that he died, he wanted my mother, my brother, my sister, and me to grow up and live happy in the land of the free. Now the sex that I love is falling under attack. And my second can find me from somewhere in the back. Since we can see it clearly through that big black eye, we lit up your world like the 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on to Sam, put your name at the top of his list, and the statue of Liberty started checking and text, and the eagle will fly. It's gonna be hell when you hear Mother's Freedom start ringing a bell. It'll feel like the whole wide world is coming down on you. Oh, about to hear courtesy of the red, white, and blue. Get your Ford trucks today, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, well, I think that needs a round of applause, everybody. That was uh, really something. On one leg. That was impressive. <laughs> that is the talent of Henry County right there. I, I just shut our mics off and let him go. I mean, it was uh, really a beautiful thing. I Thank you, uh, Tanner, for that. You uh, brought a tear to our eye. You brought a tear to the Sorry, listener. Sorry, I just smoked way too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, you're starting to sober up after that song a little bit. I mean, I was just so bored, I would get to talk. That's why, if I would have went outside, I would have been able to, like, I don't want people to think I'm a fool or something. No, you're not a fool. Trust me. This has been your best performance on this podcast. Really? I'd like to come back, but I don't think... No! I don't want you to think that... Tanner? I'm going to come back fucking loaded or something. Yeah, you you want to dial it back down about one and a half blunts. I I smoked two grams on the way here, because I was like... (laughs) I was like, these dudes are gonna want me oh to my God. so I went and bought two grams. I bought, bought, You're like so Nate Newton. I was <laughs> about forty dollars of weed. Nate Newton was a <laughs> Dallas Cowboy, an offensive Newark. lineman. Talk as Earth. close to the mic as you can, Tanner. Now I, I smoked about two grams of weed <laughs> because I I was like, these motherfuckers ain't gonna want me on the podcast. That's that's so I was I was trying to find your place I was smoking a joint and trying to find the place and this bitch looked at me like <laughs> I, I just kind of flipped her off like I did that drunkard but um, I ended up finding her. Now, find Jay. I am horrified at these allegations. Uh, Tanner, you know I don't I don't. Listen, I don't need you to smoke weed before you come here. You don't need to do that. You are you are very smart and entertaining and funny. Uh, and I mean, I do enjoy my herbal exercises, but... Uh, see, I just thought it was Benadryl. You lied to me. You lied to you were, me. You were so high, you <laughs> let me talk you into... You knocking over a beer can that you did not actually knock over. <laughs> uh, I was fucking fake. I know you were uh, you were very you were but, high. But did you eat, you didn't eat those edibles? No, they're right here. So this has been a fun episode, everybody. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to eat them and I'll order more. No, you're not eating them here because you have to. No, not here. You're not staying here. Here's a text I just got. 
He's fucked up like a soup sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> it is, uh, it's about 10 o'clock, and, uh, you're not staying, so you need to, we'll no, get you. I'm, I'm gonna leave. No, we're gonna put you, we're gonna, these boys are gonna take you home, so you're not, uh, driving. No, you're gonna stay in your daddy's no. basement tonight up in the yeah. Ripple. You're gonna sleep in school. On the Monon. <laughs> <laughs> I will set you up a tent, no, you can, uh, <laughs> I'll throw some marshmallows out there I, and some Kimba. I, I seriously just got so bored sitting here, I was just like... <laughs> Don't act like you smoked weed during the podcast. You came in. Bro, I was blowing smoke as I walked up the fucking stairs. <laughs> I, I tried not to blow inside your house. I also, you, Chris Gold, if you're listening. Do you remember you seeing that joint that I rolled? I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't think these bad things about my son. This is all new information, and I'm outraged about how your mother You will be in church Sunday you, morning. You I'll hit tell him you that right now. You hit him on the back earlier this I know. earlier in the podcast, and I think if you had done that a little bit more. I'm going to spank him. Yeah. <laughs> you guys remember seeing that joint that was in chat? <laughs> Did you guys see him? I didn't see anything. I, didn't I saw it. Working. It would have made Snoop Dogg proud. <laughs> it was a 2G boy. At least uh, probably 3. I don't know what that means. It, listen, man. Either. You are not the, most of eight. You're not the first, so. nor are you the last person to be high on this podcast. I mean, for God's sake. No, I've done it before. Maya, uh, you, can't even, you can't even imagine the amount. Oh, Maya and Gina back in the olden days oh. at Cholo Run. Oh, where and. people died by a drive by. And Miranda. Wait, as we rolled up here today. Miranda's THC count is 87. So We rolled up That's here today. That's her actual and blood type. This, this place, place, <laughs> this place is That's much it. nicer than we expected. Mine was 1860. 1860. I have the paperwork. <laughs> I have the documents. <laughs> what did you say, Jared? We, we, Dakota and I roll up here. Yeah. This is not what I expected oh, at all. Much nicer. Good. We're going to smoke a cigarette. That's okay. Let, let's finish <laughs> the podcast. Uh, we're still on a podcast. <laughs> we're still live. Uh, I thought that ended forever ago. Dude, you just admitted <laughs> to smoking that, all that weed on the podcast. I don't care. <laughs> what, are they going to do some arresting? Yeah, probably. <laughs> you are on probation. You are on probation, Tanner. I got like a month. I got like a month. Still on it. <laughs> uh, I don't care. Like, I thought you were going to like crop the rest of this out. Man. No. I mean, I don't give a fuck. I'll leave it in. I'll take it out if you want me to. But we're yeah, live on Facebook, yeah. so there's really nothing you can do yeah. about it. I mean, I just this is stuff. why I didn't want to live stream you. You know me. I don't have a focus. I said, you know, for Tanner's sake, we probably shouldn't live stream tonight. I so said I, I agree. Edit it and uh, I no, do live literally, every, all the four of them ganged up on me. Is like, okay. Well, I had told them we what we I had put that in the meme last night, announcing the you know, the the unification of the Wall Peninsula, and how we were going to uh, how we were going to be. Um, Imposing mandatory freedom for all, and so I felt like it would have been a lie. It is a great would have been fake news. It's up on the, the, our Instagram, the Wheel it of is. Turns Instagram. Excellent work. Uh, uh, was, uh, you were, you requested someone to be your dad. I'm like, well, no, let's just I make it all. I think it's the us. only time I've ever been in a Greg Lynn's meme. Oh no, I made you as do not talk to me or my son ever again. Oh, uh, yeah, was John yeah, Oliver yeah, yeah. holding you. Yeah. I uh, I I wanted uh, Milton Friedman to be my dad because he's the father of Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> David Friedman. Speaking of John Oliver, uh, the English made an announcement. Prince Charles is getting passed over. Really? Did you hear that? Cucked. He's yeah. getting line of succession cut. He's, he's getting skipped for, uh, for, Will, His for William. His own son cucked him. Is that, did Queen Elizabeth say she so? She made that decision yesterday. No. It makes sense, to be honest. Yeah. Well, he he is a he's had a divorce. It's, yeah. yeah, he's cut. He's impure. All right, uh, final he, he thoughts. Look at look at <laughs> <laughs> what? Final thoughts? Yeah, final thoughts, Tanner. Uh, I mean, Where can people find you on social media? Uh, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat. Is it Tanner Purdue on all of them? No. T Sizzle. Uh, Final thoughts, Greg. I think my Instagram is TJ Purdue. My Facebook is T R G E W. W is in George W. And then uh, my uh, Instagram is Rashford. Like the Hashley and Sasha, the Rashford. Greg, final thoughts? I just want to thank Jeremiah, Dakota, and Tanner for making the trip. I know it is not a short trip, oh. and we started late. Um, oh. Love Grand you, son. And, uh, you know, we would have started a little earlier, but Tanner had this slight issue. But 
he got lost in this rather enormous uh, apartment complex. And it's very complicated. I asked him to honk twice so we could find him while he's on the phone with Jeremiah, and we couldn't hear him, and so he just started yelling Marco until he showed up. <laughs> I, well, I came to the right spot. You did. He, I was like, okay, I know it. You were out front, and you didn't pay attention when we walked in, when Jeremiah walked in, and so you didn't want to just pick from four. You had a 25% chance of being right. Which, which apartment you knew that it was. So I'm impressed that you were here. Oh, well, there's like five years old. No, yeah. It's apartment 529. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would have picked like Tanner. Tanner, but thank you for coming. I, I tried to open their door without, with it unlocked. With it locked. I thought it was your house. So I just... Those, those lights and cameras were something totally different over there. <laughs> and, is that everything, Greg? That's everything. I just, uh... I'm going to be relying on Dakota in old age to be taken care of. Yeah, I got you. Unless you win your Walmart lawsuit, which I'm rooting for you. I'm just kidding, buddy. All right. And happy early birthday. Please, uh, please listen to the Boss Hog of Liberty on iTunes. Google, uh, just go to iTunes and type in We Are Libertarians. You can do that on Stitcher or on Google Play, and you'll find all our podcasts. Get the Boss Hog of Liberty. Uh, it is a fine show. Listen, next episode we'll give you an update. Follow our Snapchat on Saturday night if you'd like. Uh, it is going to be filled with many of the shenanigans of the party. On uh, It is the letter R, we are libertarians, because we couldn't fit the A and the E in there. So I'm looking forward to your next Snap filter for the party here. Later. Yeah, I should do that. You should I, work I, on that. Yeah, I should do that tomorrow. Remind me tomorrow, please, or else I'll forget. All right, thanks I'll for joining you. us. Thank you. Here on this episode of We Are Libertarians... You are all so generous and so kind to us, and we appreciate everything that you guys have done uh, to help make this a real show. Make sure you follow the Chris Spangle Show as well. We're going to have a lot of uh, content in there about the building of the Wall Network. If you're if you've made it to the end of this, then you're a real fan. So we want you to 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 get the inside scoop uh, as I try to build this into a real business. I'm going to give you all the. Uh, the, uh, I'm going to teach you how to make podcasts. I'm going to teach you how to build a network and uh, learn and all the things that I've learned on uh, building this and that I am continuing to learn. So thank you for joining us here on this episode of We Are Libertarians. Uh, we promise uh, some certain things. All right. We, we promise uh, at the end of every episode to do what, Tanner? <laughs> and as always, we promise... All right, well, that's another. Uh, as always, we promise. I don't know. <laughs> it's like Tommy Boy trying to trying to close. The I feel like we need a skippity doo bop doo bop. Can, can you give us a Can you give us a scat cat at least? How do I get a scat cat? Just uh, give us your true thoughts on cat and dogs. Too soon. Too soon. Still very no, very long. Cats. Wounds are fresh. Cool. Former fiance. Oh, all right, and as always, we promise. We'll do better next time if we can. <laughs> yeah. It's like you done <laughs> soon. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> the microphones are still hot over there, yeah, buddy. Can you get that camera, please? The lights are on. Nobody's home. <laughs>